15 here since the start of the 85 season. Nobody in Division 1A has more success than Barry Switzer. His 16th year, he started back in 1973. Ironically, the same year that Bill McCartney became an assistant in the Big Ten with the Michigan Wolverines. But Switzer unparalleled since then. He's after his 13th Big A championship. The Buffs will kick the football. Their fans are into this one. And this is a game that their supporters def definitely want badly. Ken Culbertson is the junior place kicker. And back to receive it. Mike Gaddis is 32 on the far side, along with Anthony Stafford, who is on the left as the Sooners look out toward midfield. We'll line you up with the Buffaloes, and this one is underway. It is well into the end zone, and see you later off the crossbar. Let's meet the Sooners offensively. It starts with the talented sophomore, Charles Thompson, ever, ever dangerous. Leon Perry, the junior fullback, right behind him. And then they use the bone with Anthony Stafford, the senior, and explosive freshman, Mike Gaddis. Eric Boss is the split end. The other side, a tight end is a converted defensive end and Adrian Cooper. Mike Wise, a junior in the middle. The guards are sophomore Mike Sawatsky, a walk-on, and the three-time All-Big 8, Anthony Phillips. Tackles Terry Manning. Sophomore and junior Mark Van Kills built. Here we go. Out across the 20 to the 25 yard line. Mike Gaddis, the freshman who goes 6'2, 205. Here are the Buffaloes defensively. Starts with Tom Reinhardt. Great football playing family. Reinhardt, a part of Arthur Walker and Cole Hayes, junior, junior at the tackles. And on the outside, the great sophomores, Williams and McGee, both out of the streets of Houston. The inside backers, senior Don Deluzio and junior Michael Jones, they're young in the secondary. We'll have a look at those youngsters in a moment as Oklahoma will face a second and five. Thompson may be changing things at the line of scrimmage. He'll keep it and then pitch it. Gaddis has a first down up the sidelines, cuts inside, and he comes very close to going as he steps inside the Colorado 45-yard line. A 33-yard gain on Oklahoma's second play from scrimmage. And that's why number 32 will be active between now and the end of the season. It's no accident that the first two plays go to Gaddis. They want to get outside. You see they're breaking them down on the outside. They get around McGee. And now this is why they want Gaddis to have the ball. They'll say he's going to be the next great back at Oklahoma. Dion figures, the left cornerback, a freshman, finally making the tackle. First and 10 for Oklahoma. At the 42 and a half of Colorado, exploding through the line is Anthony Stafford. Inside the 30, free safety Bruce Young, a junior college transfer, the man who brought him down a 14-yard gain, and already Colorado's secondary is making the tackles. Two out of the first three plays, as you look at the linebackers, have been inside power. You see the fullback getting up in there, making a block, and Stafford is gone. That was Leon Perry on the linebacker. And a big block by right tackle Mark Van Kiersbill. The 6'2", 270 junior. Oklahoma with a first down at the 28. And ripping his way through again is Mike Gaddis. We talked about the youth of the Colorado secondary. They lost all four starters back there. Dion figures a freshman left corner. The right side, Dave McLuhan is a sophomore. The safeties, Tim James, a sophomore. And Bruce Young out of Long Beach City College. He was a JC All-America there a year ago. They lost strong safety Mickey Pruitt, a three-time All-Big 8 performer back there. It'll be second and four at the 22. Gaddis already has three carries for 44 yards. Thompson keeping and then ducking up underneath the tackle inside the 20-yard line. Canavis McGee, the 6'5 sophomore, is the man who will be credited for the stop, although Thompson simply ducked under him to gain a couple of yards off the left side. Canavis McGee, we talked about him, Bobby, number 96, just a sophomore. On Cooper, the converted tight end, you see him holding off the block, doing a nice job, and able to react back inside. That's pretty good defense, keeping his feet. Two tight ends for Oklahoma, Adrian Cooper and junior David Shoemaker. First man is the fullback, straight ahead for Leon Perry. Perry, the leading scorer for the Sooners with six TDs, 58 carries coming in, averaging over five yards a carry. So many weapons. How do you stop them all? Well, you don't. Uh, you don't. You just slow them down. And, and you know, Bob, I think one of the question marks here was the offensive line. Van Kiersbill 
and Anthony Phillips on the right side are doing a great job on the Colorado defensive front early. You might hear us talk later about Oklahoma not kicking a field goal all year. That last graphic is a reason why. On first and 10 at the 14, the pitch is outside, and a big hit put out there by free safety Bruce Young on the freshman Mike Gaddis, who's out of Midwest City, a suburb of Oklahoma City. Canavis make EAN number 96. Cooper, converted linebacker playing tight end. Again, keeping his feet and now going to the sideline. This play's run into the boundary. Not much, not many places to go for Gaddis. They're able to get their defense over and stop him. That's very important for Colorado and a good job by that man. A gain of three. It's second and seven. Way out to the right. Eric Bross, the junior, split in. with a choice cuts inside he will score Charles Thompson for his sixth touchdown of the year and Mike Gannis at right half number 32 the freshman with a big block to spring the quarterback We're number one. We're number one. so three minutes and two seconds into the game and the big red already on the scoreboard R.D. Lasher will attempt the extra point the younger brother of departed Tim Lasher. So for six consecutive years, the Sooners have had that name on the back of the jersey for their place kickers. He's 24 for 25 on the year. The holder is Todd Thompson. The snapper is Eric Fultz. No problem. Oklahoma 7, Colorado nothing, 3-0-2 in. In order to stop this thing, you got to get defensive penetration. Look at Van Kiersbrook and Phillips. 68 and 76 they clean out the defense and now watch how much room Thompson has on the end there's nobody even threatening him he just uses that great speed and he's into the end zone Oklahoma 7 Colorado nothing we'll see the buffs on offense for the first time when we return to Boulder being brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. By AT&T, the right choice. And by the good time, great taste of McDonald's. The taste was good. It was not much time for Oklahoma to score here early. And the Sooners, Todd Thompson, will kick it off right to left. Back to get it. For Colorado will have a look in a moment at their two return men who will try to get some things going. There's Thompson, the senior. MJ Nelson, 18 and 9. Mike Pritchard back to get it for the Buffaloes. And here's Thompson's boot. Twisting. Hash mark right, five yards deep. And MJ Nelson, the junior halfback, figures he'll keep it right there. Let's meet the Buffaloes. Sal Anessi out of Oceanside is the quarterback. He's a junior. Behind him is Eric Kissick out of Kansas. He is the six foot fullback. Mike Pritchett and look out for Eric Bieniemy. He's the talented tailback number one. Jeff Campbell is the split end out of Vail. The tight end has never caught a pass at Colorado. John Perrick, a junior. Eric Norgard, outstanding performer at center. He's surrounded by Joe Garten, a sophomore and junior. Darren Muhlenberg at the guards. And the tackles are Bill Coleman, just back from a knee injury, and Mark Vanderpool, just a sophomore. Nose of the ball at the 20. Motion man was Pritchard, left-handed thrower, and it's down the sidelines and out of bounds. Mike Pritchard, the man throwing it as it was complete out to JoJo Collins. So some first play, razzle-dazzle by the Buffaloes. I have to tell you, I, I did Colorado in the, uh, in the Blue Bonnet Bowl about two or three years ago, and I criticized him for being too conservative. I ran this one in high school, but I'll tell you, against Oklahoma, an over-aggressive defense that makes it work, that's a great opening play. Uh, get the Sooners a little something to think about. Campbell finally on the tail end of that play, and it's the Buffaloes out over their 40. And Essie left side for Biennemi, and the Sooners stack it up pretty well out there on their right side. Defensively, Oklahoma lines up with senior Tony Woods at nose guard. The tackles are sophomores, Tom Backus and Scott Evans. Evans is outstanding. Wayne Dixon, a junior at left end. On the right side is James Good, a sophomore. The inside backers are Kurt Casper and Frank Levins, both out of Texas. A lot of the Sooners are, of course. Jerry Parks, a freshman, and senior Scott Garl at the corners. And the safeties are Kevin Thompson, a junior, as is Ken McMitchell. Field. Scott Evans 
on the right side finally got him down but the Buffaloes are moving the football. Vanessa is averaging just three yards a carry good yardage that time. Colorado loaded up unbalanced here. These are three linemen right here. That's an unbalanced line. Here's the here's the end and they want to come right. Quarterback goes up over the middle. They make it work. This is something they've wanted to do against Oklahoma with the unbalanced line. You see they outman them. Quarterback Anessi able to duck it up inside and make the play work. They will do that all night, Bobby. They'll try to make it work. One of the things that USC did to Oklahoma, excuse me, one of the things that Oklahoma tried to do to USC was unbalance it, but the safeties came up and made the play. Let's see if Colorado can make that work against uh, the Sooners. Third and less than a yard. Ball is at the 49. They need to get to just short of the 48. And most of the time on third down, they'll sneak the quarterback, Sal Anessi. Tony Woods, the nose guard, meeting him, but it looks like the necessary yardage has been covered, and Colorado has another first down. The Buffaloes into this ball game, averaging 281 yards rushing per game. Last year, they were number four in the nation, and they returned 85% of their ball carriers in terms of yardage from that team. But they changed their offense. They're out of that wishbone, and they're in more of a power eye, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Yeah, they've had a lot of names for it here, haven't they? It seems the accepted name of their offense is the eye bone. Sooners with an early touchdown on top. In motion, left side was M.J. Nelson. Flags fly as the Sooners came up. Anessi getting outside and finally racked down at the 40. Some problems on that play at the line of scrimmage. Kevin Thompson, the safety, came up to get it. And a good, a good block by the tight end, John Perrick. Basically, that's his job at Colorado, not catching the football with zero receptions as a junior. That might be a free one here. Now, it looked to me like Oklahoma jumped off sides and they snapped the ball. And then Onessi took it outside, but it looked to me like it might be a free one here for uh, Colorado. 85, Tom Backus was the first man across the line. Now you can see Bill McCartney is a little upset. They're saying that the Buffs drew him off. Coach McCartney took this job seven years ago. Set up time to table for himself that he said didn't make a whole lot of the folks happy here in Boulder. He said it'll take seven to ten years to compete with the Oklahomas and Nebraskas. He'd like to win a conference title in the next two seasons. Dead ball. Offense was in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. First and 15. Number 84, Jeff Campbell. You can see there's the movement. Defensive line jumping after they see it in their peripheral vision. So it is on Colorado. Good call. One of the keys for Colorado is to keep the Oklahoma offense off the field, and that is a major responsibility for the Buffaloes offense. Everyone that faces Oklahoma has that problem. So it'll be first and 15 at the 47, exactly four minutes in. Buffaloes have scored very early four of the six times. You ask who the opponents have been, Fresno State at Iowa, Oregon State at Colorado State, Oklahoma State here. A 20-point hammering the Buffaloes suffered on a day when they turned the ball over quite a bit. And then a rather lackluster 12-point win at Kansas a week ago. We'll see if they can score on an opening drive against a powerful Oklahoma team. It matches up pretty well against rushing attacks. Only 107 yards per game given up by the Sooners. And Essie out left side, caught there, and there's the first collegiate reception from the tight end, John Perrick. He's a 6'6 junior from Granada Hills, California, and he's finally glad he made the trip. Perrick, uh, Bobby, I think Perrick, that catch only for four yards, but it's an important catch. And look how small an essay is. This is one of his problems. He's 5'11". They say he plays at 5'8". <laughs> I guess that's not good. Perrick making that catch will make the secondary think a little more. He hadn't caught one all year, as Bob said. But because of the way he does play, that's why you'll see the ball go out to the side. He's got better vision out there, and it's second and 12. Here comes the enemy. Inside the 40, down near the Oklahoma 36. Wayne Dixon, the left defensive end, had a long run to stay with him. 
The enemy coming in, averaging six yards a carry with seven touchdowns. Richard Dillon, the better of the linebackers, is not in the game for Oklahoma. This is a draw play, and you can see as the linebacker Blevins starts to shift left, he's reading it differently, and here comes the enemy, and you don't want this guy in the open field, and that's why. Look at the moves on this kid. Now, he is small. He's just about five, six, or seven, but he's 190 pounds and very tough. Good work up front by center Eric Norgard. First and 10 at the 36. Vanessi outside, the enemy trying to cut up field and an outstanding play by the right corner, senior Scott Garl. Garl came up quickly and wrapped him up. A gain of about two and a half yards or so. They're inside the Oklahoma 35-yard line. Clock stopped with 9.13 remaining in the first quarter. Sooners on top, 7-0 on the early untouched touchdown jaunt of Charles Thompson. Coming into this game, Colorado felt they needed to throw the ball 20 times. If you follow the Buffalo program, that's an outrageous amount of uh, pass attempts, but they believe they need to mix it up against Oklahoma. Motion man is Mike Pritchard. Vanessi out to the right side. Completely open is JoJo Collins. Inside the 20 of Oklahoma. Collins, a six-foot senior. Jerry Parks, the left corner, finally got him out of bounds. But the passing game mixed in with the eye bone for Colorado. Muhlenberg and Vanderpool, look at the job they're doing. And a block here, cutting the guy off his feet. And this gives Anessi enough time. Look at how free he is. No pressure from Oklahoma. And a good throw by the little left-hander. Wide open receiver. But the guard and the tackle made that play, doing a nice job on the line. First down at the 18. Again, motioning is Pritchard. And Eric Kissick, the fullback, nearly running into Anessi. A lot of excitement in the ballpark here tonight, especially on the part of the Colorado fans. And to the sidelines, here's Chris Fowler. Okay, Bob, I'm here with the undefeated lucky Colorado Cake. Now, here's the story. Every year since 1982, for one game, Tom Appy and Ralph Patterson, who used to be head basketball and assistant basketball coach here, now at Appalachian State, have sent a cake to the CU football coaches, and every time they sent the cake, Colorado has won. Now, here's a look at the six games, the six cake games, the 84 Iowa State game, the only game they won that year, and look at the Nebraska game. Back up to you guys. Trying to take the cake against Oklahoma tonight, Anessi. At his own 26, into the end zone, a receiver down at the goal line. It appears that JoJo Collins may have slipped as he tried to make a cut out toward the flag. You're right about that, Bobby. He was covered pretty well, and an essay threw the ball to a spot that he couldn't get to. Get to laugh. Last week it was ice cream. Chris, this week it's cake keep an eye on him. He's going to be growing out of his clothes. Of well, we're headed down to the southeast next week, so he'll probably have some barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> Illegal procedure on the offense. Decline. Third down. Oklahoma. Against opposing team offenses have given up third downs, excuse me, given up first downs on third 25% of the time. And it's been a while since the Buffs have scored a touchdown against Oklahoma. Out to the right side, the ball was tipped. Waiting for it was Eric Bieniemy, and inside linebacker Frank Blevins, a 6'4 sophomore, showing some good range there as he got out to get a hand on it. It would have been an easy catch. That ball's a little bit underthrown. Great job by Blevins. This is as tough a thing as you'll ever have to do as a linebacker. Picking up the last back, you see him take it on the right of the screen. He went, back, he went out of the picture. Here he is from behind, number 35. Watch this great effort because this ball is just about there. And that is the toughest coverage you'll ever have. 35-yard field goal attempted by Ken Culbertson. Not the prettiest kick, but it does just sneak inside the left upright. Culbertson on the year, now three for four. He's hit from 28, 48, and now 35. And Colorado. Six minutes and 46 seconds in on the score touchdown. Board. Colorado with a Ken Culbertson field goal at 7-3. Better than six and a half minutes in. Culbertson will kick it off. Back to receive it for Oklahoma. Mike Gaddis and Anthony Stafford. This is a higher and shorter kick. It comes to Stafford at his 15. Straight ahead, he cuts to the right, and he's just over the 30-yard line. 
So the Sooners will have decent field position getting started right in the middle. And let's summarize both scoring drives for you. The Sooners took just over three minutes to go 80 yards in just eight plays. Charles Thompson capped it with the 11-yard run. And then the Buffaloes chewed up better than three and a half minutes. It's a big, big drive by Colorado, Bob. Uh, their defense coming back on the field would have been demoralized, but now they know their offense can move. First man through, big fullback, Leon Perry. 6'1", 223, a junior out of Orlando, Florida. Cole Hayes, one of those he was carrying with him, and he decided to carry the other tackle, Arthur Walker, on the left side as well. Then they're going to need to slow down Anthony Phillips, the only remaining starter from the uh, early season offensive line. He did a great job on that play. And in fact, he just ran down the field in front of the ball carrier. Somebody's going to have to hold him up. And a footnote on the freshman, Mike Gaddis. When the Sooners went 80 yards in eight plays a moment ago, he had four of those plays for 47 yards. It's second and five. There is Anthony Stafford out across the 40 to nearly the 45. It'll be an Oklahoma first down. Left inside linebacker Don Deluzio, a senior, was the man who brought him down. Deluzio, the defensive captain, number four in tackles on the team. He's number 49. Boulder, Colorado, Folsom Field, the home of the Buffaloes. You're watching the first night game in the history of Colorado football played here at home. And it's Oklahoma Ready. 7, Buffaloes 3. First down just outside the 45. Noise is a factor. Thompson doesn't like something that happens at the line of scrimmage, and he will call an early timeout. We'll take one as well with 7.09 remaining in the first quarter of play. Eighth-ranked Oklahoma on top by four. Hi. I've been looking all over for this terrific video cassette I heard about. It's called The All-New Not-So-Great Moments in Sports. There's scenes where Daryl Dawkins renovates NBA backboards. That's a fantastic video. The all-new Not-So-Great Moments in Sports is 45 minutes of the funniest film I've ever seen. Great, so you have it. No store has this version, but you get it free with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. You get 25 weeks of SI, including the Pro Football Preview, the Beautiful Swimsuit Issue, the Summer Olympic Special Issue, the Commemorative Olympic Pin Set, and the all-new Not-So-Great Moments in Sports. You get it all. Just call Sports Illustrated's toll-free number, and you'll get SI for over 47... The best wishbone quarter back he's ever seen uh, and I agree with him and uh, what they call a tragedy Barry called it that this morning coming off last year's knee injury he now has an ankle injury is not the player he once was but when he was right he was absolutely the best here are some speed figures for you Holloway used to run about a 4 7 40 with the knee injury went up to about 4 8 5 with the ankle now he's at about five seconds that's quite a difference from Charles Thompson's 4 3 5 in the 40 I get us Across midfield and out of bounds just outside the Colorado 45-yard line. Big yardage for the Sooners, who will have short for another first down as Canavis McGee, the 6'5 sophomore out of Wheatley High School in Houston. The outside linebacker is the man who caught up with him. Sooners have run actually less option tonight than I'm used to seeing them run. They're running a little more power with Gaddis, but the uh, philosophy of their offense is they always want to get outside. Second and one. just bumping off would-be tacklers has the first down near the 42 yard line and they're doing some running at Don Deluzio right now the left inside linebacker well Deluzio is another kind of a tragic story amazing that he's even back he's had two knee injuries number 49 you see him duck under and help with the tackle there he also although he's a co-captain not the player he once was he had some problems in the offseason two years ago, came back, hurt his knee. He's worked his way back. He's having a little bit of a tough time of it tonight. Oklahoma has checked in Eric Mitchell in the wishbone. He leads the way as Stafford gets the give, and he is wrapped up by Arthur Walker, the 6'5 junior, who goes 255 at left tackle. Arthur Walker coming off a sprained knee. He missed the Oregon State game. Bill McCartney glad to have him back. One of the few times Oklahoma's had short yardage gained on first down. Adrian Cooper has checked out. 
Oklahoma has in the ball game. Artie Guess a split in number 18. He's wide to the right. Thompson goes left, cuts up, a couple of yards there. Inside the 40, Michael Jones, who plays alongside Deluzio at the right inside position. The six foot 230 junior in on that play, number 59. Second time around against the wishbone. The one thing you can't practice against, of course, is Oklahoma's speed. But look at Jones, the leading tackler, keeping his feet long enough to get in underneath. What I was saying was the second time around, second series against this offense, you can adjust a little better after you've seen the speed of it. Oklahoma facing third and six. Sooners in third down conversions, 38% on the year. And Thompson wants another timeout. Two timeouts spent in the first 10 minutes of the game. And here's what happens when the sophomore quarterbacks, this sort of thing doesn't happen with Jamel Holloway in there. Well, you talked about the uh, the 40 times, Bobby. You're right. The, the basic difference between these two players may not be athletic. You've got inexperience with Charles Thompson. I think he's doing the right thing. If the kid doesn't recognize the defense, I think they wanted to run into the boundary. Colorado was defending the boundary. Barry's yelling at him because maybe he should be able to recognize that, but he does not recognize as well as Jamel. Jamel was as good as anybody ever was at reading defense. Don't forget, right after our game here tonight, we'll be going back to our college football studios where Tim Brando will recap the day with scores and highlights from around the nation. And then at 11.30, it's a big whack matchup as BYU takes on the Rainbow Warriors out in Hawaii. It's a tough down for Oklahoma. Third and long. They ran it all day against USC, and they lost that game. And Thompson is not the passer that Jamel is either. So, he, But I'll tell you about Oklahoma, Bob. You can look from the run just about anything on third down. They've got options on the wide side, run the fullback, or throw the ball. It's a big early defensive play for the Buffaloes of Colorado. Thompson with a deep drop back to midfield. Out to the left side. Bross with a great catch, but he's out of bounds. Eric Ross, the 6'2 junior, was stretched out that time. Free safety, Bruce Young all over him. And Oklahoma will face fourth and six. Long Beach City College, number seven, Young. He was an All-American in junior college. And it's not that difficult for a defensive back to make the transition. He's close enough, the ball a little bit overthrown, and they make the difference. Great catch by Ross, great catch. Todd Thompson. Averaging 40 yards a kick, Jeff Campbell and Jojo Collins back at their own 10. They won't mess with a kick that is anywhere inside the 10-yard line. He tries to pooch it. It'll land at the 5 and go into the end zone. A 38-yard kick. And the Buffaloes trailing 7-3 with 5-17 left first quarter. will start first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Bill McCartney started here in 1982 told the folks it would take seven to ten years. Well, we've divided it up from 82 to 84 with the tough times, 725 and one, a bit of respectability after that, and now aiming for the top 20. And of course, tonight is a major step. He said this would be a major disappointment in his life, Bill McCartney, if he did not win this game. Colorado believes they can win this. JoJo Collins split out wide to the left. Anessi looking out that way, and he gets the ball circling out, and there's Mike Pritchard. Across midfield, down inside the Oklahoma 30-yard line. It took Kevin Thompson, the safety, to knock him out as the Buffs play it big on first from their 20. 52 yards. They've had number nine coming out of the backfield now block, and they send him deep. He beats the linebackers. You see it. Now, I want, I want you to watch number 16, JoJo Collins, a backup wide receiver right there, boom, great block, and Richard all the way down inside the 30-yard line. This is a different kind of Colorado offense than Oklahoma's used to seeing. Collins, a big block on Jerry Parks, the left corner. First down, inside the Sooner 30. Anessi is four for six in the passing department. The enemy with a pitch outside, inside the 20, down to the Oklahoma 15. So some diversification by the home team. Well, you can only do three things in football, but Colorado's doing them well. Run right, left, or up the middle. The pitch by Anesse, and you're going to see a block again. 
right there on the ground. Nelson, number 18, made a great block at the corner, and this is the guy that has to carry the ball, they say, 20 times for 100 yards tonight. If he does it, they can win. The enemy having a big night. Joe Collins into the game, split out wide to the left. Interesting things have happened with him in the game so far. Motion man is in Jay Nelson. Quick opener to the fullback, Eric Kissick off the right side, down near the Oklahoma 10-yard line. And he has some words with the tackler, linebacker Kirk Casper. You see, now, this is what Oklahoma is used to doing to other teams. Colorado established the wide play. They've established the pass, and then they go to what is really an undersized fullback up the middle. Why? Because they think he's going to score a touchdown? No, because they're keeping him honest, and that really is the philosophy of the wishbone, and the Colorado's eye bone, or whatever you want to call it, is basically the same thing. Good yardage on first down. It's second and five. An SA left side trying to cut back against the green, and he's hit by about five Sooners. Wayne Dixon, one of the first there, number 34 the left defensive end. That time, Oklahoma, a good job of containing the play and not letting the Buffs get outside. It'll set up a play of around third and four. Colorado this year, third down conversions have been pretty good, up around 40%. We'll call it 39. Jeff Campbell has checked out of the ball game. JoJo Collins is in and will put you in the end zone behind Oklahoma. the reach of tight end Tom Stone. An essay had him open. He had beaten the defender, but Colorado could not put six on the board, and they still can't get into the OU end zone. Oh, this is an awful, frustrating play. Here's Stone. Nobody's covering him, and he's wide open. An essay just leads him. Now, Stone is not a real fast player, and that was the difference on that play. He had beaten Jerry Parks. There it is. Parks never had a clue. 26-yard attempt coming up for Culbertson. Campbell the holder. Chris O'Donnell is the snapper. And it's to the left, and it's good. So he seems to be pulling the ball a little bit tonight, but he snuck it inside the left upright a couple of times. And with 3.34 remaining in the first quarter, Oklahoma 7, Colorado 6. In the big eight, the Buffs are 1-1. One and one having beaten Kansas last week after the disappointing 20-point loss to Oklahoma State. Ralphie three, actually a female on the field on the heels of that score. And so it's seven, six Sooners and to the sidelines. Here's Chris Fowler. Okay, Bob, Oklahoma halfback, the freshman Mike Annis, has been taken to the locker room. Trainers and doctors are examining his neck. They say it's not a serious injury. He looked to be in some pain as he walked off, but the trainers say he should be able to come back. Bob. That's why we saw Damon Stell come on. We saw Eric Mitchell, who averages about 14 yards every time he touches the football, come in to spell Anthony Stafford. It's not like, not like Oklahoma has an empty barn back there when, no. when one of the thoroughbreds is injured, but and obviously yeah. concerned about Gaddis. Gaddis is a, a true thoroughbred, though. He's a little bit of cut above some of the other backs. They feel that speed-wise, this backfield is as good as any they've ever had. And folks, if you know Oklahoma, you know that's a pretty good statement. So now it's number five, Glenn Milburn, a freshman running back, back at the goal line, joining Anthony Stafford as the Buffs hold helmets high. They trail by one. Five yards deep. Stafford says, no way. Oklahoma will start first and 10 from the Sooner 20-yard line. Be sure and be with ESPN tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Eastern for NFL Game Day. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Pete Axthelm, and John Saunders host the most comprehensive hour in the NFL. Then at 7.15, they're back with highlights of every NFL game played on NFL prime time. And it all starts as far as our regular season coverage. Next Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, the Redskins on the road against the Oilers. Tonight, it's prime time college football. Charles Thompson with a touchdown tonight, leading the Sooners. Oklahoma 7-6, three and a half remaining first quarter. Big noise factor because they're right in front of the student section. Thompson cuts up near the 25, and he may have stumbled across as outside linebacker Alfred Williams, the 6'6 sophomore out of Jesse Jones High School, Houston. Number 94 wrapped him up. It was a double option. No thought of going to the fullback. And now they're getting a little bit out of their game plan. Their original game plan was power inside to Gaddis. Gaddis out of the game, temporarily at least with that injured neck. And now they're going back strictly to the option. 
No more field goals. They're telling Sal and Essie. Still trying to get into the end zone. Are the Buffaloes against Oklahoma? Quick opener. Still way ahead, Leon Perry. He looked like he had absolutely nothing and still got it up within about a yard or so of first down territory. Perry so powerful. He's number 28 career in Oklahoma rushing. Redshirted last year because he was rehabbing a shoulder injury, but he's a tough, strong runner who is quick to the hole, and that fullback is a tough guy to bring down. He's out of Orlando, Florida. Let's uh, summarize Colorado's scoring drive for you. Minute 43 to go, 74 yards. The big 52-yard pass got things started. Ending in the field goal at 7-6 Oklahoma. Two tight ends, Cooper and Shoemaker, in for the Sooners on third and one. Straight ahead. And it's Anthony Stafford for the first down. Stafford, a 5'7 senior out of St. Louis. Michael Jones, the right inside linebacker, with the tackle. They're going right every time they need a yard, and they're going behind Anthony Phillips. You've got Wise 65 in for Latham, who's injured. Phillips doing a great job. And Oklahoma having a big day on the right side of their line. So if you're sitting at home and you're wondering on short yardage, keep an eye on number 68, Phillips, and number 76, Van Kiersbrook. Van Kiersbrook also 65 wide. Big disparity in rushing yards. The Buffaloes have done it through the air. First down for Oklahoma. Thompson keeping, throwing on left side, and falling down on the play was Eric Bross. He was inside the left hash mark and then was to break out to the flat. It was a timing pattern as Thompson had spit it out, and Bross simply lost his footing, and that's not the first time it's happened to a receiver here tonight. They say on this field, Bob, that it, it coming towards us, it's slick on a wet, cold night. Of course, it's not wet and cold, but we're not down on the field either. There is a difference going towards the press box as they were on that play versus going the other way. It's because of the grain of the artificial turf here. It happens to lean a little bit. Second and 10 at the 33. Fit to the belly of the fullback. Thompson escaping, and he could turn this into something big. A nice play by the right corner. Dave McLuhan came up. And knocked him out of bounds. When Thompson eludes that many tackles, you have the feeling he's about to break one. Luckily for Colorado, number 12 McLuhan stayed with the play. Okay, the one thing they say about McGee, he's just so quick. He gets rid of Van Kiersburg right away, and you see great penetration. That'll kill the wishbone any time. Thompson headed for the sideline and knocked out of bounds. Again, a third and long. With Thompson in the game, they are not as effective as they would be with Jamel. Adrian Cooper, the starting tight end, a local guy from Denver who was within about three steps of the football coach's office of signing with the Buffaloes, turned around and walked out, visited with Barry Switzer the next day and signed with Oklahoma. So he has checked out of the ball game and they brought in. Sideline warning against the home team on the sideline. Well, the Buffaloes are having a hard time containing themselves on the far sideline. There's a lot of Buffaloes. I heard of Buffaloes on that sideline. Artie Guess is into the game. A sophomore split in. He's out of your screen, down to the left. On third and nine, they're in the eye. Oh, Coach Switch is going to love this. Well, I'll tell, you, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what happened. Last time out for the Sooners in the half, but I'll tell you what happened there. Colorado was confused defensively, and they were moving. When Thompson came up to the line, there was nothing recognizable back there because Colorado hadn't decided, and he was confused, and he called timeout. Take a look at these guys moving around now. Watch how they move here. Now, they're not completely sure because, see, Oklahoma has gone to a three-wide outset. You can see top of your screen where they split. They've got a slot and a wide receiver at the bottom of your screen. Oklahoma was, uh, Colorado was trying to adjust, and Thompson got confused by their adjustment. He called timeout. That's the right call for a young quarterback, and that's a different kind of formation from Oklahoma, three wideouts. So with a minute 41 remaining in the first quarter of play here at Folsom Field in Boulder, and Oklahoma on top, 7-6. The Sooners are out of timeouts for the rest of this half. Charles Thompson out of Lawton, Oklahoma. In his first game started last year, he had 123 yards against K-State and three scores. 
He's been explosive ever since, sharing some time with Holloway. The ideal situation for Barry Switzer is to get Holloway back to 100% and then alternate them. He does not want to play Holloway here tonight if he doesn't have to. If he can get Jamel back to 100%, and that's questionable. Jamel, when he was 100%, he was like he was from another planet. Third and nine, we'll try it again. A lot of noise from the students right next to the Sooners on that side. Bombing it, overthrowing it, down the left side, intended for Eric Bross. Staying with him step for step, the freshman cornerback, Dion figures, and the Sooners will kick the football. Figures does a great job here. This is just straight man coverage on figures, and it, what they're doing, they're playing that run so they can't get the draw play, and figures close enough. Thompson is not a precise passer. The ball way overthrown. Todd Thompson kicked it 38 yards last time. Back to receive Jeff Campbell and JoJo Collins. Collins, the deep man, at the Colorado 25-yard line, and it's a beautiful spiral that'll send him inside the 10. Great coverage on the special teams. The Sooners get a good tackle there from Chris Wilson, a freshman linebacker, number 30, with action on the special teams. So a big turnaround in field position there, and Colorado will be very deep. Adrian Cooper, we talked about him starting at tight end. Well, what about the guy he's replacing, the All-American? Keith, Keith Jackson, what you see here is under the red helmet, four years at Oklahoma, 62 receptions. In seven games with the Philadelphia Eagles of the NFL under the green helmet, 42 receptions, so he's 20 short in just seven games. He was a great blocker and a big play tight end, as you see by the touchdown figure. They do not have that on this team, and it hurts him because that's a short pass, and what you see Thompson attempting is maybe not possible for him at this point in his career. Sal and Essay, optioning left, the enemy, nothing there. Sooners had five white shirts out on the right side defensively. Second down coming up, and here's Tim Brando. All right, Bob Carpenter, thank you. Washington State has a quarterback. You may not be Troy Hickman or Rodney Pete, but he's Tim Rosenbach, and he's leading the country in passing efficiency. There's a touchdown pass to Elmer Thomas, and Washington State right now is trailing Arizona State 24-21. Elsewhere in college football, Southern Miss and Southwest Louisiana 10 to nothing. The Golden Eagles, they may be Independence Bowl bound. <coughs> Ohio State over Minnesota 10-6, and Utah State and San Jose State. We'll update that one for you later. All right, Tim, on second down, they're in the eye, and it's up the middle of the field, and Jeff Campbell has it at the 49-yard line. Right up the middle, over top of the Sooners, and another big passing play. Colorado's had the ball three times tonight. Every drive has featured a big play through the air. And this is an entirely different offense. You're exactly right, Bobby Campbell. Ten catches, 284 yards coming in, but how about the pass by Anese? Right there, and Campbell makes the great catch. Not great speed, but he knows how to get open, and Anese knows how to find him. This is something Oklahoma's not used to seeing from Colorado, and as yet, they have not adjusted. Nothing Kevin Thompson could do about that one. First down at the 49. Motion, Pritchard. They go behind him to be enemy, and he has maybe two or three yards off the right side. Eric Bieniemy out of West Covina, California, number six in the nation, averaging 137 yards a game. He's on a pace to gain 1,500 this year. Passing yards. Not surprising for Oklahoma, but Colorado did not complete a pass last week. Yeah, great point. The zero surprises no one. The 133 is a surprise. Colorado averages 112 per game. Second down and eight. The enemy again, right off the middle, and this could be one of those times early in the ball game as we approach the end of the first quarter when Colorado might go to their tailback three straight times to get the guys emotional on the front line and get that running game established. Barry Switzer on top of Bill McCartney, 7-6 after one quarter of play, but the Buffaloes are right in it will be a great sky for our pre -hall Halloween weekend a week from tonight but uh, tonight here in Boulder there is excitement at Folsom Field second quarter to start Colorado third and four at the Oklahoma 45 yard line motion man Pritchard Vanessa down the middle and the defensive play made by Ken McMitchell 
the 6'1 junior out of Indianapolis stretching to knock that one away from Pritchard who is right down the middle again. Well, he wants to go to Pritchard. Pritchard's the motion man out of the backfield. McMitchell with him all the way on his back. I don't mean that literally. That's great coverage. Getting that right hand in there. Now, this is the key. The key is the hand on the side of the ball without touching him. That's just tremendous defensive position and a big play for Oklahoma. Senior Keith English averaging a nation leading 48 yards a kick. Back to get it. Jerry Parks at his own 10. A tight spiral that wobbles its way into the end zone. So this will be a 45 yard kick. Sooners will take over and here at the sidelines Chris Fowler. OK, Bob, update on Mike Gaddis, the Sooners halfback. He has a stretched nerve in his neck. He's in the locker room right now. They are x-raying him. And at halftime, they'll evaluate whether or not he can return. Obviously disappointing. This is his first start. The Sooner coaches wanted to showcase him tonight, Bob. Barry Switzer, though, feels pretty good about the guy behind him. Number 27, six-foot senior Damon Stell. Gaddis had carried the ball six times for 58 yards for Oklahoma. Eric Mitchell is in the ball game for the Sooners. Mitchell straight ahead and then ducking just over the 25 yard line. Eric Mitchell came out of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, a highly recruited quarterback. He was an All American, and with a lot of quarterbacks, he's now a halfback in the Oklahoma picture. Well, the Sooners trailing in total yards, they've done it on the ground. Colorado's done it through the air, and the Sooners have used all of their timeouts, and we've still got 14 20 remaining before halftime. Oklahoma 7, Colorado 6. Second down and five at the 25. A fake to the fullback. Option in motion. And out over the 30-yard line for a first down is Charles Thompson. Again, they came with an unbalanced line to the wide side of the field. Now, Colorado is going to have to adjust to that formation. And that means that they've got the center, three linemen, and then a split end on the line of scrimmage to the wide side. That's too much power and too much room for the Sooners. They're going to they're get a big play out of that if Colorado does not adjust. Ball is just over the 32. Eric Bross went on wide to the left. Adrian Cooper, the tight end, near side. Thompson does a 360 and gives it to Eric Mitchell, and he is hit hard. Finishing him off after Cole Hay stood him up was the right outside linebacker, Canavis McGee. That's one of those situations where number 82 stands up the runner and number 96 starts licking his chops and hits him right in the numbers. <laughs> you don't see too many halfbacks with number one. Eric was a uh, quarterback. And take a look at the shot McGee gives him here as he turns around. Ugh. The one thing he's not doing, he's not getting down and protecting himself as a running back. He needs to do that. Well, Eric is... Uh, Pretty confident runner. He likes to go for those extra yards. He took an extra hit. Tumbling up to the 40-yard line is Anthony Stafford as he was upended by Michael Jones. The clock continues to run under 13 minutes remaining in the first half of play with Kevin Kiley and Chris Fowler. This is Bob Carpenter from Folsom Field in Boulder. There's your clock and the score. Early touchdown run of 11 yards by Charles Thompson. Just 3-0-2 into the first quarter. Gave Oklahoma the lead and then field goals of 35 and... Then another one of 28 by Ken Culbertson. Carl Cabanis is in the game. Split end left side for Oklahoma on third and two. Fullback. Looks like a first down for Leon Perry. You've almost got to play that as a straight dive and short yardage. Oklahoma will run that fullback. Perry's tough, 223 pounds. You have to stop the fullback. Mike Wise in for Latham, who's an all-conference center. Latham is injured 65 on Reinhardt, gets him turned just enough, and then you've got 223 pounds that runs a 4-5 coming. That's Perry, and he's going to get two or three yards. Good block by Wise, who has played better than Coach Switzer said he thought he would. Barry Switzer lost Bob Latham in a game you saw on ESPN at North Carolina. Expected back maybe against Oklahoma State in two weeks. A big game in Stillwater for both clubs. Thompson outside for him. Absolutely nothing there as Dave McLuhan came up from right corner to totally destroy that play from the offensive standpoint. They had the right defensive coverage called McLuhan had zone on the short side of the field. Now here's McGee 
McGee's going to play both. The quarterback, he gets the ball pitch. McLuhan comes up to make the tackle, and McGee helps him out. And that's just great boundary defense by Colorado. Both players with ties to the pros. McLuhan's dad, Kent, played with the Raiders, and Canavis McGee's high school coach was Kenny Houston, the Oilers' all-pro safety. Second and 13 at the 40. Thompson fakes to the fullback, keeps it himself, feeling his way up the line of scrimmage and cuts up field. A play that took a long time to develop, and he gets about a foot short of midfield before Michael Jones forced him out of bounds. It does take talent, speed, and patience to run the wishbone when it's strung out like that. This is all athletic ability by Thompson. This play is stopped. A look at Thompson recognize that he can go laterally. Right there, he turns the Jets on. Watch the block by Stafford here. Great block. And then they get him out of bounds. That was very close to being broken, and it was all on Thompson's athletic ability. Now, again, short yardage. Stop the fullback. Force him to keep the ball. The quarterback, turn it upside. Let your pursuit stop it. Third and three at almost midfield. They've got to get inside the 47. It's a long three. And they do not get there. Tom Reinhardt, the nose guard, stacking things up for Colorado. Okay, remember what I said, stop the fullback. That means clog the center. Now watch Jones, number 59. He's coming, and the reason is they want to stop the fullback. He gets in here, he gets Perry and Mitchell. He gets both blockers here. Take a look at this. 59 gets both blockers. There's nowhere to go. The rest of the defense covers up. It's a great call defensively. Great execution by Jones and a pretty good replay downstairs, guys. Tom Thompson to kick it. Put you behind him, looking toward the Colorado end zone. And it's a fake. It's also an Oklahoma first down, but a fumble. The ball was carried and dropped by Chris Melson, a defensive back for the Sooners. Don Deluzio in on the play, and the Buffaloes have it. Oklahoma had a first down and then coughed it up. So the Sooners fumble for the 30th time this year and lose their 12th. Well, this is a great call here. Here's Deluzio, 49. He's going to eventually wind up with it. Take a look at the hit. Great hit. Helmet right on the ball by Bruce Young and Deluzio with the rest of the defense. That would have been a first down, but not a bad reaction by the Colorado defense on a fake punt. Those things are tough. Great tackle. Helmet right on the ball. That's what you need to do. So Oklahoma had its first down, and here's Sal Anese. Richard motion near side. Anese looking down the middle. Campbell! At the 25 of the Sooners. He averages 28 yards a catch and got 31 that time. This kid was a walk-on. He's 5'9", 170 pounds, number 84. And that's a great pass by Anese. The pass on Kevin Thompson with the coverage. The coverage not great, but on first down, you really can't expect them to be expecting Anese just 5'11", doing a great job. And I tell you, game plan for Colorado is right on tonight. He's throwing 60%, 6 for 10 for 165 yards. Inside the Sooner 25. And maybe a yard is wrapping him up with Scott Evans, the right tackle. Now the game changes a little bit as they get close. They're inside the 25. Remember, Anese, number eight, is only 5'11", and they say he plays about 5'8". How does it change? You can't get the same loft. You don't have enough field. So he's going to have to go wide. They're going to have to shorten their routes, and that will put him at a little bit of a disadvantage to Oklahoma. Let's get in here, baby. What's up, Tate? Ah. Yeah, Tate, do it. Come on. You come to get him. Yeah, the defense is fired up. We'll see if the offense can translate it into something here. They'll shift the tight end, Perrick, and the halfback, Pritchard, to the right side. And running behind them is Bienemy. Something that had not happened since 1984. A Colorado touchdown against Oklahoma. 
And on the extra point attempt, the Buffaloes have been charged with a timeout. It might have been because the mascot was out on the field. Something that uh, tempers the celebration just a bit. I don't know, Bobby. If I was Colorado, I'd like to see that guy on the field all night. They haven't scored in three years. 9-11 left before halftime, and the Buffaloes are on top for the first time. 12-7 Colorado extra point coming up. You buy GMAC, the official sponsor of America's Dreams. By the U.S. Army, learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. And by Pitney Bowes. See how your mailroom, copier, facsimile, and dictation systems can profit from the Pitney Bowes relationship. Harry Switzer, really disappointing series for him. His team on a fake punt gets a first down, gives up the football, Colorado scores, and now the Buffs go for two. Anesse will throw it. Other side, easy for John Perrick. The tight end earlier tonight caught his first pass as a collegian, and now he gets his first points. Gary Switzer's team now trailing Colorado for the first time since 1976. Very similar play on the two-point conversion to the one that didn't get to Stone. They fake play action this way, and remember the tight end early in the game, wide open Stone. This time it's Perrick. There's nobody there. Oklahoma's left him alone. Two-point. Let's take a look at the touchdown. I'll show you the guy that made this play. The enemy ran it in, but Muhlenberg, the right guard, is the guy. He's going to head out that way, and he winds up picking for the enemy. Watch number 63 go all the way to the sideline and keep his feet. That's the key. Occupies two guys. The enemy uses him as a pick down the sideline for a touchdown. What a great stop and change of direction this was by Eric B. Enemy. His eighth touchdown of the year. Colorado gets that TD they've been coveting for so long and lead 14-7. I never dreamed I'd join the... Here in the second quarter, Colorado on top of Oklahoma with two field goals, a touchdown, and a two-point conversion. It's 14-7. Nearest you, Stafford. Furthest away is Milburn to receive the kickoff of Ken Culbertson. It'll fall short at the 15-yard line. The up man is Oklahoma's number 20. That's Glenn Bell, a sophomore halfback. The up man on the special teams. Down to the sideline, here's Chris Fowler. Okay, Bob, Bill McCartney is happy now, but about three minutes ago, he was livid. He did not want to go for two points after that touchdown. He told his offensive coaches he signaled for one. It was too late. They had called the two-point play, and he said, well, go ahead with it. This time, it worked out. He's happy now. As a footnote, the wind down here has really picked up. You saw it affect the kickoff. It's a crosswind. It could come into play, Bob. And, Kevin, I've noticed the last couple of minutes, our temperature up at this level has dropped about 10 degrees. My toupee blew off. <laughs> Oklahoma need to drive. Sooners give it off to the first man through, and that is Rodney Anderson. What a story he was a year ago. Rodney Anderson came on late last year when Lydell Carr was injured and had 100-plus yards in three consecutive games, including 191 against Oklahoma State, 118 against Missouri, and he followed that with 119 against Nebraska. Just another example of Sooner depth. But the quick scoring strikes of Colorado tonight, a big story, better than half the field in three plays in just over a minute. Second and five at the 29. Anderson again has the first down out near the 40-yard line. Alfred Williams finally all over him. You remember early in the game, inside power on that first drive worked very well for Oklahoma. They're going to go back to it with the fullback. They're going to go after the nose tackle on the inside backers. I'd like to make a point about, about what Chris said about Coach McCartney and that two-point conversion. I think the reason he was livid was because that is a play he might have been saving for the end of the game if he yeah. needed two points. That thing was so wide open that he didn't want to use it. And, Kevin, he's going to go for two in that situation because he's got to have a win. A tie against Oklahoma doesn't do him a whole lot of good. There's the pitch. Go Staff! Go Over midfield, and it's Anthony Stafford down to the 47 of Colorado with Tim James, the strong safety. Oklahoma has no conference losses, of course, coming in, and Colorado has one to Oklahoma State. 
Watch to your left, there's a block. I couldn't pick it up. It was a great block on the corner here. It gets two people. I think that was Rodney Anderson, a fullback, and then a missed tackle. But the key was they loaded up on the corner and took two people out, and that made the play work for a first down. A great block, I think, by the fullback. Anthony Stafford, seven rushes, 41 yards, as the wind whips at Folsom Field. Inside Colorado territory. Rodney Anderson on the fullback carry. Right at the left tackle, Arthur Walker. As the ball is down around the 45-yard line. It'll be second down and about seven for the Sooners. Colorado people felt that they needed to move their defensive front a little bit. Not a great deal. They don't feel, because of their size, they can stay with. Uh, you saw Alfred Williams there. He's 6'6", 230. That's kind of a streaky. They don't feel they can play these guys straight up. Their movement has helped them, but you open yourself up for a big play when you do that. Marty Guest came into the game, lined up on the wrong side. Adrian Cooper told him to get out wide right. He was the man crossing through your screen. Thompson keeping just over the 45-yard line, and nose guard Tom Reinhardt stayed right with him. That's about the only time you can catch Charles Thompson is when he's in traffic right in the middle of everybody. Great job by Reinhardt coming from the nose guard position. The nose guard, what he wants to do, number 97, is keep his feet. See 97, he gets rid of the center, goes right down the line. When he knows it's wide, you flatten out, go right down the line, and it runs him right into the quarterback. That's terrific nose guard play. Charles Thompson, five yards a carry, eight rushes. He's covered 40 yards. It'll be third down for the Sooners. And they're coming right on this play. They're unbalanced to the right. In the eye. Thompson rolling out. He's got a man open. That's Eric Mitchell at the 25. Wrapped up by Tim James. They had Cabanis or check at 43 Cooper, the tight end down deep. And then Eric Mitchell just circled in behind him. Eric Mitchell, we talked about him. He's a former quarterback. Figures gives him kind of a half chuck, but you see Mitchell put his hand on Figures to gain some balance and get away from him. A nice throw by Thompson. Good catch. This guy's just a terrific athlete, Mitchell. I thought one of the fine wishbone quarterbacks three or four years ago, but he couldn't break in against Jamel. Great pass. Good play. His first catch of the year, good for 20 yards and the first down. Flags fly as Anthony Stafford has it. Tom Reinhardt in on the stop and we'll check the flag. It's going to be a penalty on Oklahoma coming in 50 penalties, 429 yards. What are the two most serious things for a wishbone offense? Penalties and turnovers. You don't want long yardage situations. Sooners averaging 71 yards in penalties per ball game. First and 15 as the ball moves back to the 30. Mitchell, Anderson, and Stafford in there. And on the end around, it's the tight end, Cooper. Nowhere to go on the short side. And a turnover on the play. reverse back to the short side watch Canavis McGee playing on the short side that's Van Kier's built he gets his hands on him this kid's a sophomore playing against a great offensive lineman and now he's got his hands on the ball and it's loose that's Cooper Michael, Michael Jones. Jones picks it up again they're coming back to the short side against an unbalanced line the key here is 96 McGee the ball is loose and now that pursuing defense picks it up. Turnovers and penalties. You got a turnover, penalty to get the play before. That's tough on Oklahoma. They've got to clean it up. Sooners have coughed it up twice tonight. And SA to B enemy, who's over the 35, out to the 38-yard line. Ken McMitchell, the junior safety, wrapping him up. Oklahoma had some good safeties to replace. All-Americans Ricky Dixon and David Vickers playing a couple of juniors back there, and Vienemy goes to the sidelines hurting. Yeah, he got hit in the ribs. He's out of breath. That's what he's telling me. McMitchell did a terrific job on that play all by himself, fighting off a blocker and able to get Vienemy down. That's just a great secondary play, too. There he is, number 12. McMitchell, along with Scott Garl, 49. J.J. Flanagan, a 5'11 junior, spelling Vienemy at tailback into the game. 
Very Buffs fast. on top, 440 left in the first half. Out over the 40-yard line, that's Flanagan out of Pomona, California. You'll see a lot of these so-called skilled people of this Colorado team heading for the mountains from the West Coast. Yeah, that's right. Flanagan is a kid that uh, wanted to transfer. Coach McCartney changed the offense because he wanted to get the ball to his eye backs, or he wanted to have an eye back. So they went to a, a power eye. Flanagan felt, well, I'll get the ball more. He's still here, and he can run. He's not a great inside runner, but if he gets it on the perimeter, look out. He's as fast as anybody dressed in white out. It's third and a short four. An essay intercepted. Down the sidelines is Jerry Parks. Looked like the receiver may have turned a little bit too late, and the ball was a bit outside, and Parks with his third interception of the year. Oklahoma coming in, 12 interceptions on the year. Anese, a very poor pass. He turns, he looks. This ball is just not on target. It's right to Parks, who's standing between two receivers, and Jerry's been around. He knows which way to go with the ball. That's a big turnover for Colorado and a great defensive play. Two, two consecutive secondary plays by uh, Oklahoma, and the secondary has played very well for him. So Parks with his third interception of the year. Just a redshirt freshman out of Fort Bend, Texas. The Sooners have really saluted their secondary coach, Bobby Proctor, in the way their young defensive backs have played this year. Right through the middle, Anderson inside the 15. Rodney Anderson, 6'1", 212, exploding right up the middle. There's no option there. This is a dive. It's like a trap, I think, to the fullback coming right up the middle. There's no question where they're going to go here. They hand it right to Anderson, and Anderson is loose in the secondary. And Oklahoma, once they get a turnover, they are very capable of getting in the end zone quickly. Rodney Anderson, four rushes for 34 yards. First down at the 14. There he is again. How many black shirts does it take to take him down? Canavis McGee and about four others finally in on the stop, and the Sooners will be close to a first and goal. Well, the option, the thing it does, it spreads you out, and that makes one-on-one -on -one block in here, and you've got Wise doing a great job on Reinhardt. Get some turn. That's Anderson's legs that you see that Reinhardt's trying to get back and make the play, but he's already gone. That option spreads you out. Everybody has a responsibility, but you've got to take care of it at every point. The fullback, the quarterback, and the pitch. And when you get tired or you get a turnover, it's very tough. Second down and one. Ball at the five. Fake to the fullback. Thompson cuts toward the end zone, and he evidently has a first down. Canavis McGee again from outside linebacker in on the stop. And Oklahoma will be tough to stop now. The thing to watch out for here, remember that offensive line has been rebuilt. We don't know how much power they have when you pack it in there defensively. Adrian Cooper, the converted linebacker, has two catches. One was a touchdown last week, number 43. First and goal at the two. I'm looking for the fullback. If I'm playing defense, I'm looking for the fullback. That's Rodney Anderson, Mitchell, and... Stafford behind him. Stafford diving into the end zone. And Oklahoma within a point after of tying the game with 2.39 remaining in the first half. Great work up front of the right side by guard Anthony Phillips, the three-time All-Big 8 performer, and the junior Mark Van Kiersbilk. He's the tackle. Very impressive drive there, Bobby, from a championship team. And these guys... They've been there before. They get a turnover, and they just pounded it in. I tell you, that drive reminded Sooner fans of some of those fourth-quarter drives against Nebraska in recent years. That's the way they've done it. R.D. Lasher, 25 for 26 on the year. Sophomore out of Plano, Texas. Drills it through. And 2.39 from halftime, a tie game here in Boulder. All right, this is straight power. Watch the fullback. They're going to follow the fullback. Here comes Anderson. He gets Jones, the linebacker, just buries him, and then he's airborne. Barry Switzer knows this is a big game with Oklahoma State and Nebraska still to come in quest of a 13th Big 8 title. Boulder, halftime approaching Oklahoma with a long touchdown drive. 
Todd Thompson to kick it off. And he hits a low line drive into the breeze. It's touched by MJ Nelson outside his own 10. He escapes one tackle and gets out near the 20 yard line. The student athlete of the game is brought to you by the U.S. Army. Get an edge on life and be all you can be. Tonight's recipient is Colorado tight end Tom Stone. Tom's an aerospace engineering major with a 3.1 GPA, and he hopes to pursue a career in NASA's astronaut program. By the way, the University of Colorado has produced seven astronauts in the NASA program. That's an incredible statistic. That's why they're going through the air so much tonight, Kev. I was thinking, Tom, you know, Tom was, uh, he could have almost been airborne to catch that pass early in the first quarter. That ball foul. Personal foul. Personal foul on the return. Well, it's funny how when a kickoff is fumbled and something happens behind all the blockers, then bad things seem to happen with the guys who are trying to set up the return. Things just fall apart from there. So inside their own 10 is where the Buffaloes will start after that long Oklahoma drive. Well, the turnover is the key, and that doesn't show on that drive, and the defense had to come right back on the field. Four plays, 28 yards. The fullback was the key to that drive. Anderson was incredible, just pounding it up inside and making things work. Rodney Anderson doing the job as he did late last season. Now the Buffaloes have to be careful here. They've got all their timeouts remaining. Sooners have none. Two and a half remaining before halftime. They've got 90 plus to go. They're going into what win there is, and that could be tough in a punting game if they have to punt. They've also got to go a ways to get that first down. After being shaken up a bit, gets about 10 yards of the 20 back on first down, and here's an update with Tim Brando. All right, Bob, good to hear your voice tonight. Let's now show you what's happening between Washington State and Arizona State. Kelvin Fisher now breaks through, and it's a wild one right now. The Sun Devils leading by three in the fourth quarter. Bob? An interesting season those clubs have had. Washington State up and down every week, and they have done some outstanding things in the Pac-10. The clock here in Boulder is just under two minutes. It's second and 12 as we approach halftime in a tie ball game. The enemy really protecting that football out over the 25 yard line and Kev I made the point a moment ago they've got to be careful down here they turn the ball over and they could be in big trouble going into the locker room you can see the enemy really protecting the ball as he goes up the middle very a quality back this kid again not very big but he's 190 pounds and look at the explosion coming through the hole as Bobby said both hands on it there and then trying to get his arm on it there, but somebody grabbed a hold of it. This kid, little backs that weigh 190 pounds are the worst things you could ever, it's like your worst nightmare on defense. Third and four. On SA right side, pitching, and nowhere near the first down. In fact, for Oklahoma, they almost got the ball carrier out of bounds, which really would have been a big play, but the clock runs with a minute left now as Wayne Dixon was in on the stop. So the ball will be turned over to Oklahoma. By the time the Sooners get it, they won't have a whole lot of time left. They cannot stop the clock. Oklahoma has adjusted their defense into the boundary, and there's nothing there anymore. The interception, their coverage was into the boundary, and on that play, they went into the boundary, had plenty of people. Now, Colorado's going to have to adjust back. Keith English will kick it to freshman Glenn Milburn. Milburn is standing at his own 30. Clock continues to run while they sort things out. I think they're going to let it go. Buffaloes will just take a delay of game here. Clock will stop as the whistles blow. And the clock operator milked about another two seconds off that one after the whistle blew with 26 seconds remaining. Now it reached 24. Game of game on the offense. So we're approaching halftime here, and Tim Brando, Bino Cook, and Lee Corso will check in with scores and highlights from another busy Saturday in college football. Got to like the way the Fighting Irish responded today after their emotional win a week ago as they took off took care of Air Force today. Ken McMitchell now has joined Glenn Milburn back to receive the kick as Colorado will lose five yards but that doesn't mean a whole lot with the leg of senior Keith English. By the way for three years he was the understudy to two time All-American Barry Helton who's now with the 49ers. So they've had great kicking games here in Boulder in recent years. Tie game, 24 seconds before halftime. Sooners setting up for the return, rushing only one man. Long kick to the 29. Milburn just stopping. And the clock shows 13 seconds remaining. 
a 50 yard kick. Watch Steve Lee, number 81 for Oklahoma. Tell me he can't block this punt. He stopped short. Steve Lee, 81. He was right there. And he, ne he never even laid out for this thing. Watch him come right up the middle. Nobody blocks him. He just, he just never tried to block it. He was right there. That'll be a tough one to explain. Well, somebody uh, later in the game, look out for that. Because they're going to have to block the guy up the middle. That's the easiest way to block a punt. And they were there. Charles Thompson throwing the football this year. Came in 7 for 22 for 65 yards and three interceptions. Only a 32% passer. And Oklahoma, after getting that turnover and the touchdown, will be content to go into the locker room with a 14-14 tie. That's the first half story from Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado. Sooners struck first, Buffs came back strong, and Oklahoma equalized. And back to the studio with Tim Brando. All right, Bob, thank you. Well, it is obvious that things have indeed changed in the Big Eight and by virtue of minutes. Well, I, our offense has played pretty well. We made a couple of mistakes, a couple of calls went against us that uh, I talked to officials about, but that uh, is behind us. we got to play 30 minutes. We need to be this kind of ball game, and uh, the crowd's going to do it pretty good. Uh, we got to win the second half, obviously, and I think we can. You surprised Colorado has been as good as they have on offense? Well, they've had the big play. They big play just to death, and they've had a hot hand. 84's got a hot hand. Sal did a good job, but I kept thinking we were way behind, but we're still ahead in the ball game, and now it's tied, so I believe we'll win it. Okay, thanks, Coach. Bob? Oklahoma always believes it'll come out the winner, and they've got enough to handle from the Buffaloes of Colorado here tonight. Bobby, you got to love Barry Switzer. Let me come right out and tell you, I think we'll win this. Sure. Well, it's that kind of attitude that takes you to national championships and 12 bowl games. He's proven it. Todd Thompson kicking off, second half underway, a long kick, about seven yards deep into the end zone, and Mike Pritchard says, let's stop it right here. Buffs at their own 20-yard line, and we'll take a look at the first half statistics, and you'll see an offensive show by both ball clubs, but coming in different ways. Well, passing for Colorado and on the ground for Oklahoma. You're right, Bobby. Who would have guessed that Colorado would pass for more yardage than rushing yardage, and of course, turnovers that are not there, the two turnovers, for uh, Oklahoma, but the one big one, devastating turnover for Colorado that evened the game late in the half. Colorado approaching its passing best of 190 yards against Oregon State this year. Buffs have it, and the third quarter is underway. Motion man again is Mike Pritchard. An essay lofting it up and near the hash mark. Nothing doing there as Pritchard, the man in motion, was the intended receiver. Downfield, Kevin Thompson, the safety along with his partner Ken McMitchell in the middle, both on the coverage. We do have a flag on the play. Not the kind of mistake that a coach wants coming out of the locker room. And Tom Backus, the left tackle, evidently the encroacher. Here's the Colorado offense in the first half. 12 plays to a field goal, six plays to a field goal with a lot of distance, and they punted, went in for the touchdown, and only three plays. Look at the ground they're covering in few plays tonight. The interception, which led to an Oklahoma touchdown, and then finally the kick near the end of the first half. Bill McCartney in his seventh year. One of the biggest ball games of his career, and he admits it. First and five at the 25. Eric Kissick, the fullback. As the Buffs operate on first and five, he'll have a couple out near the 27, 28 yard line. The inside right side linebacker, Frank Lemons, a sophomore, in on the stop. A couple of things to consider here. The wind is picked up again. It's moving left to right pretty briskly into the face of the Colorado players. It means two things. One thing, they have a short quarterback who has to throw the ball high, look out, it doesn't get held up. The other thing is in the fourth quarter, Colorado will play offense with the wind at their back, and they have been the passing team tonight. And keep in mind, there are three fourth quarter comebacks for wins this year. Kiss it, the fullback, four of the first down. So the game plan is pretty simple on first and five. Give it to the big fullback twice, and let him get you set up out over the 30-yard line. It'll be first down at the, about the almost the 33 as Colorado the wishbone of 85 to 87 turned into the I formation of spring 88 and now the old I bone number 63 Muhlenberg on the linebacker the running back goes away from him the hole that he vacated it worked Richard in motion an essay under pressure flushed out up the middle caught 
Jeff Campbell again. The 5'9 junior from Vail is having a big evening. Kirk Casper, the inside linebacker, on the stop. Pretty good improvisation that time as an essay was flushed out. Joe Garren, number 62 on 78. Scott Evans, with help. This guy is an all Big 8 performer, a great player. Anese using a little bit of his own ability to get free. And then Campbell coming back. Another good pass, but look out, thrown it into the wind with a short quarterback. Colorado does not want to have to do that. So Jeff Campbell, who came in averaging 28 yards a catch, now has three balls for 80 tonight. We're talking short quarterback, he's 5'9", too. Campbell, there's a bunch of little guys out here, little Buffalo. Yeah, and if they don't pass it, they hand off to 5'6", Eric <laughs> yeah, Bieniemy, right. Or 5'11", Mike Pritchard. Look how Campbell towers over Bieniemy. <laughs> And they've got a freshman here who's a quarterback that we'll be hearing some things about in the years to come who stands 5'10", 185 out of L.A. Darian Hagan. And the, the most exciting thing about him is not the fact that he can throw the football with both hands. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be the center on the basketball team, too. He's way up there at 5'10". It's a quarterback sneak here. Second and one. Now, well, instead, it's to the fullback off the right side. Now, third and one. They'll probably sneak it every time. What's the difference? <laughs> now they like the fullback on second down. As Eric Kissick has the first down, they'll move the chains. And the Buffaloes who started this drive deep. Arizona State on top of Washington, 31-28. Washington State, of course, in Pac-10 action tonight. We'll update you on key scores as we go along in nighttime action. With Oklahoma playing here at Colorado. First and 10 at the 44. The enemy negative yardage as the Sooners swarm. James Good, Wayne Dixon, the defensive ends. Curtis Williams, who backs up Tony Woods at nose guard. Oklahoma getting emotional on the defensive side. Wayne Dixon, 6'4", 240. Now, he's a guy that took over for Cooper when they moved him to offense. You haven't heard much from him all night. He doesn't get blocked. And he's standing right there. In fact, Good and Dixon you haven't heard much from. And they're the defensive ends. It's cooling off in Boulder. But the action is staying hot out there. And now, Colorado spends an early time out here. Only two minutes and 50 seconds into the third quarter of play. Buffs have played well tonight. It's 14-14. We're not a company. But we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop. To perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career. A career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Army. The Navy. The Air Force. The Marines. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. For lunch, the Porsche 944 Turbo generally prefers Ferraris. Although it has been known occasionally to snack on Corvettes. If all there was to Pitney Bowes was Mr. Pitney, you'd have dreams and ideas. But no one who truly understands a customer's needs. Every dreamer needs a doer. That's why every Pitney needs his Bowes. See how your mailroom copier facsimile and dictation systems can profit from the relationship. I've got it. Let's make it work. Tonight's game is being brought to you by your local authorized Porsche dealer. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by Atra Plus, Gillette made it smoother. Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado. 
We're less than three minutes into the third quarter of play with Kevin Kiley and Chris Follard. Bob Carpenter at the home of the Buffaloes. It'll be second down and 13 after that three-yard loss by Biennemi. And Anese is looking up the middle, lofting it, and just not able to handle it, Eric Kissick. Very well-conceived play again, Bobby. The fullback up the middle it was man-free coverage. The free safety was the guy that was going to get him if he caught the ball, but not before he gained a lot of yardage. They roll away. See him sneak number 33 right there? If Kissick makes that catch, you don't even see a defender here. I think the free safety probably would appear. That's his arm on the left side of your screen. There was no one near him. Buffaloes have not been good tonight when they face third and long. And it's very long against a good Oklahoma defense. An essay, nothing doing there. Scott Evans wrapped him up. It looked like a quarterback draw, or else he saw something downfield that didn't materialize. But an essay, little deception involved that time, and Colorado will have to kick the football. So now they're 0 for 6 and third and long. Well, I think this is a great call. His par the uh, the tight end misses a block on Good, and Good forces him up. But I believe that was a quarterback draw, and I think the reason is the punter, Keith English. They know this guy can kick the ball 55, 60 yards, and they're just not going to take any chances. They'd rather turn the ball over. He's averaged 48 yards and two kicks as long as has been 50. There's the freshman, Glenn Milburn. And they will try to run it. Now they'll try to throw it. It's a first down. Inside the 25-yard line to David Gibbs, a cornerback on the special teams as Bill McCartney pulls another one out. 31 yards for the first down. And now we have a late flag on the play. Yeah, but look where the flag is. That flag's going to be after the play, I think. Definitely afterwards. One of the problems when you have the greatest program or one of the great programs in the country, everybody wants to beat you and they'll do anything to do it. That's what that call is all about. We have an ineligible receiver downfield on the offense. Oh. We have an unsportsmanlike call on the Oklahoma bench. Where is the flag for the ineligible receiver? It couldn't be on the 20-yard line. It should be on the line of scrimmage. I didn't see any flag. Both flags fell down at the end of the play, Kevin, in the same area on different sides of the field. All right, remember, English, English ran the ball first. Remember that. Right guard and right tackle. Pardon my zeros there. Let's take a look and see if they didn't jump when English takes off with the ball. Now, first, he's thinking run. And there they go. This originally, evidently, was supposed to be a run. English thought that he was going to be dropped for a loss, so he threw the ball. Definitely a penalty, but I did not see any flag at the line of scrimmage. You're definitely right. The flags were way downfield. A big mark off here against Oklahoma down to the 45-yard line of the Sooners. Now, this is going to have to be explained. Uh, an eligible receiver, I believe, is lost of down. As an Oklahoma coach, yeah, ba Barry's got to hear about this one. I don't understand that call. Yeah, Barry, so if it's after the play, if it's unsportsmanlike conduct after the play, it's... it's I don't understand it. Now the officials have called a timeout. 11-16 remaining third quarter. There will be at least three officials at the Oklahoma bench to explain it to Barry Switzer.
So the Buffaloes end up getting what they wanted in the first place, which is a first down. Instead of via the fake kick, it's via a penalty at the Oklahoma 45-yard line. Anese running out of room, and he is hit hard. Sooners Wayne Dixon and Curtis Williams okay, going out to the defensive left side. Excuse me, Bobby. The ruling was the penalty on Colorado was assessed first, an eligible receiver downfield, and then they penalized Coach Switzer for coming on the field after that penalty. Unsportsmanlike conduct, automatic first down. That's a tough one. And I remember I was saying earlier, when he talked to Chris Fowler, he said, well, there was a couple of calls I didn't like in the first half, but I spoke with the officials. He might be having a conversation after the game. That's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Second down and 14. Tight end Perrick and halfback Pritchard out to the right side. That's the way they give it to Bienemy, feeling his way. He gets past the original line of scrimmage and gets out of bounds. And a flag flies near the sidelines. And when that happens, you have to be thinking late hit by the defense. Yeah, and they're looking at Wayne Dixon, number 34, is going crazy over there, banging his hand on the ground. Late in the first half, a penalty and then a turnover hurt Oklahoma. And now a rash of penalties big time against the Sooners here. A personal foul. There's a player injured over on the sideline. It's Curtis Williams who's limping away from the Colorado bench. We have a late hit. Personal foul on the defense first. Okay. The enemy is the type of back you never know when he's down, so it's very difficult to gauge a hit defensively. Now there he's going out of bounds, but he's already beaten about three guys. That, if that is the penalty, that's a tough call, a real tough call. The kid's still got his balance. And as I said, a guy that small with this kind of balance. All right, he's out of bounds there. That's a tough call. Boy, that is a very, very tough call. And uh, I think Coach Switcher's got a reason to be upset on that call. The penalty's a factor. They've hurt Oklahoma more than Colorado. Curtis Williams making that so-called late hit is the man off injured. Now it's the Buffs. First and 10 at the Sooner 24-yard line. An essay has the enemy and a bad pitch, and it's recovered by Oklahoma. Jerry Parks, the left cornerback. The play was falling apart as an essay, as an afterthought, dumped it off. To his talented tailback, the enemy, he could not handle it, and a big turnover. Again, Colorado trying to run into the boundary to the short side of the field. That would be this way, and having a real difficult time of it. Now watch how many people for Oklahoma come over there. They've defensed the short side brilliantly here, late in the first half and the second half. One, two, there's nothing there, not enough room to go. And they're able to get the fumble on the bad pitch from the pressure. Fullback, Leon Perry. Hit hard initially there by Arthur Walker, the left tackle. And then his teammates finished him off, but credit the left tackle, number 83, with the penetration that initially stopped the big 6-1 fullback. Maybe a gain of a yard for the Sooners out near the 30-yard line. This game getting to be very emotional, and I really believe that'll help Oklahoma because they're on the road. The more emotional they get if they don't get penalties, the better it's going to help them fight this crowd. This crowd is really in the game. Already guess went out wide to the right. Perry, the fullback in the wishbone. Thompson faked a pitch straight up field on the hash mark to the 33-yard line. Michael Jones and the way the Buffs were playing the pitch, it's a good thing for Oklahoma that Mitchell kept it that time, or rather that Charles Thompson kept it that time. I don't really, I think you're right, Bobby. I don't think it would matter who was in the game. By position, fullback's got 62 yards tonight for the Sooners. The quarterback, and this is amazing because the quarterback's a big yardage position. Most of that came from Gaddis early in the game. He's been out. He got 58 of those yards with four minutes gone in the game. So they really shut down the halfback position, too. 
Buffalo crowd alive on third and five. Thompson sideline has a man. It is incomplete. Out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. Anthony Stafford. The left half way downfield. Looked like he had a beat on the catch, but evidently could not control it. This ball is thrown just bravely by Thompson. A great throw, and we've got an injury. Okay, Stafford, a rusher normally, and this team does not throw up, and, but look at the job Thompson does just hitting him in the chest with a little behind him. He can't hold it. When he hits the ground, it's loose. We've talked about Thompson. We're talking touchdown if that ball is just a little bit inside, but it's the ground, really, that knocks it loose. Pretty good effort. So the Sooners came close to getting down deep in Colorado territory at the 30-yard line over there. Still down on the ground is Anthony Stafford. They've already lost Mike Gaddis tonight. They have Eric Mitchell to back up Stafford. While they check on the injury, we'll take a timeout. 8.44 left third quarter. It's a tie in Boulder. About his own 22-yard line. Jeff Campbell and JoJo Collins back to get the punt. On fourth and five as the Sooners kick it away. This one will carry all the way back to the 12-yard line. JoJo Collins. A 54-yard kick by Todd Thompson. Don't forget, right after our game, we'll be going back to our college football studios where Tim Brando will recap the day with scores and highlights from around the nation. Then at 11.30, it's a big whack matchup as BYU takes on the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii. That's at 11.30 Eastern. Well, that was the wildest five and a half minutes I ever saw without a point being scored. <laughs> I feel like I got steamrolled. stands nine inches shorter than Kirk Casper, the 6'3 linebacker. Juked him one way, and he was gone the other. Second and three. The enemy's run 15 times for 91 yards. This time it's the fullback, Kissick, and he has a first down at the Colorado 39. A wild one here, and back to the studio to Tim Brando. Bob, UCLA will remain number one. They beat Arizona handily today. And as we look at the rest of the Pac-10, Washington loses to the Ducks, the Quack Attack, by three. Oregon State and Stanford play to a 20-all tie. Temple and Cal and the Golden Bears win it by 17. And Arizona State and Washington State had a wild one. Sun Devils won it by three. Let's get back to another wild one. Bob, Kevin, and Chris. Bye. All right, Timmy, we're having some fun here in Boulder tonight, but sooner injuries are starting to mount up a bit. Inside left linebacker, Kurt Casper just limped his way off. He's a senior, and he'll be replaced by a freshman, Chris Wilson, 6'3", 227, out of Richardson, Texas. That hurts because Dylan's already out. He was the backup to Dylan. Wilson was coming out of spring football. Here's the enemy cutting up, and he is met head on by the man who just checked in. A pretty tough play for Chris Wilson. On the sideline, here's Chris Fowler. Okay, Bob, injury starting to mount up for Oklahoma. We told you earlier about Mike Gaddis. He will not return with that neck injury in the second half. They'll evaluate him this week in Norman. Anthony Stafford, the other tailback, just limped to the locker room with a right knee injury. Trainers will check him out. And no word yet on Casper, although he looks to be in pain, and it's uh, looks to be a knee injury with him, too. More on that later. Back upstairs. All right, Chris, keep us updated. It's second and eight for Colorado. They're in the straight eye this time with two men wide out to the right. Deep man B enemy, the tailback up over the 45. Tony Woods sent him flying the nose guard. So the Buffs will face a third down play. The reason they give it to B enemy, and I believe this is the first time tonight they've done it, 
17 rushes, 98 yards, and a touchdown. They felt that he had to run the ball 20 times for 100 yards. As you can see, he's right on schedule. They also like to give him the ball because the offensive line just loves the guy. Yeah. They like to block for him, and the more they give it to him, the more pumped up the offensive line gets, so it's an emotional thing, too. A 28-21 win earlier against Oregon State. He had 211 yards. Third down and four. They've got to get past the 49-yard line. Vanessa. This will be very close, but where they're marking it, he's about a half yard short. Scott Garl, the right cornerback, came up to bump him out of bounds as the Sooners covered well, and the Buffs already know it's a kicking situation at midfield, or is it? I wouldn't bet on anything in this game. <laughs> now, they've had great success with an unbalanced line. In this game, I really believe that Colorado, in order to win this game, they need to be leading halfway through the fourth quarter because Oklahoma's got the experience in the big games, and they need to have a cushion. Kevin, there were some of the Colorado players who wanted Coach Bill McCartney to go for it on fourth and one. But with Oklahoma, six minutes left in the third quarter, and then being against the wind in the fourth, he wants to play a little field position here. Good point. Angles it down to the 10. Fair catch signaled, and it is out of bounds at the one. A 50-yard kick. That's why he didn't go for it on fourth and one. So field position a factor in this third quarter. We're still tied in Colorado. Game Parks does the right thing. He lets the punt go. But watch Tim James, number 17, the starting strong safety, playing on special teams on the one-yard line. He knocks it out. Biggest play of the half so far. That's great hustle. And the guy who kicked the ball, Keith English. And what a performer. After five years, this guy is punting. What a job he's doing. And there's James on defense. Now it's time for the Oklahoma offense. Leon Perry, the fullback, gives them some operating room as he gets five yards out to the six. Michael Jones, situations like this, the fullback is ultra important to the wishbone attack. With some of the injuries, let's check and see who Oklahoma has in there. I see Eric Mitchell, number one. Perry, of course, the fullback, number two. Damon Stell was in there at right half. He's just been replaced by numbers. I will check it. to the 10 yard line maybe the 11 it's Perry again Oklahoma has also checked in Rod Fisher a freshman halfback out of Lawton Oklahoma number seven he will shuttle out now as Damon Stell goes back in Fisher is a very similar player to Gaddis not quite as big what they've lost with Gaddis out of the lineup now is their ability to run power with the fullback leading the power they get in the backfield now has to come from the fullback when he carries the ball Oklahoma good on short yardage, third down, the fullback has the first down as Leon Perry fights off the tackle of Canavis McGee and bounces out to the 14-yard line. So the Sooners in their first three critical plays of this drive at 13 yards. Well, this is what you're going to see. Mike Wise, 6'6", 270. Barry Switzer says he's too tall. He wasn't too tall to make that play. And when you can block the nose guard like that one-on-one, -on -one, your fullback's going to do some damage. Yeah, Coach Switzer likes those wide bodies in there. Wise sort of trim at 6'6", 270. Fake to the fullback. Thompson pitches. Side, Eric Mitchell, forget it. He is wrapped up there by the free safety, Bruce Young. He's that junior college All-American we talked about earlier. Again, short side, again, trying to run the option. Colorado taking away the other side by alignment, so they run into the short side. There's nowhere to go. They've got Thompson and then Young on the pitch, and that's picture per perfect defense against an option. Bruce Young out of Banning High School in Carson. That's where Jamel Holloway went to high school. Second and ten. Unbalanced to the wide side again to the left. Damon Stell trailing Thompson, who cuts it up and he's wrapped up on a good defensive play by Alfred Williams, the left outside linebacker, number 94. 
There it is again, unbalanced. Here they are, the three, and then the receiver. This guy is ineligible right here. He's a tackle, and they're always going to go left. They've only gone away from it once. They try to go to the wide side of the field. Look at the Buffaloes. They know what's going to happen, and they're all out there. Alfred Williams, number five in the team in tackles, but Barry Switzer sooner is there dealing with a man who's number one in tackles for losses for Colorado, and now it's third and nine. Thompson looking right up the middle. Too tall for the intended receiver. Oklahoma's already guessed the sophomore split in. Oklahoma they want the call on, they want the call, excuse me, Bobby, they want the call on 29 Theon figures. The question is, were they both going for the ball? Is it incidental contact? Could it have been caught? Watch 29, he's gonna bump them. And then go down. Now the question in the official's mind is who made contact with the ball? Be caught, no flag, Oklahoma punts. Evidently not a catchable ball. Todd Thompson has kicked the ball well tonight too. JoJo Collins is inside his 40-yard line and Jeff Campbell is about eight yards in front of him. And this is a high kick and a long one. Back to the 33. Collins squirts his way to a 12-yard return. After the 51-yard kick, 2.50 remaining, third quarter. The Buffaloes have good field position. 2.50, third quarter. The Buffs at their own 44. Mike Pritchard motioning left side. A fake to the tailback. The enemy is out ahead of the quarterback, an essay, and he'll be stopped for a yard or so as left tackle Tom Back is pursued well. He's a sophomore out of El Paso. It'll be second and long, and the total offense is in favor of Colorado tonight. This may be the only way to beat Oklahoma by doing what they do. They've really come out of character, Colorado, and they're making it work. By the way, you may think the last team to beat Oklahoma was Nebraska. It wasn't. It was Kansas back in 1984, the University of Kansas. And doesn't that chafe away at the folks in Lincoln? They give us to the first man through, and the fullback, Eric Kissick, with some second effort out to midfield. It'll set up third and about five. It's right tackle Scott Evans, the best defensive lineman for Barry Switzer's up front guys. Made the tackle. The ball is right on the midfield stripe. They've got to get about four and a half yards for first down on third and a long four. Clock is running with a minute 40 left third quarter. JoJo Collins into the ball game for Colorado. MJ Nelson, a backup halfback, is also in there, so they've got some speed burners. They split Collins out wide to the right. They're in the eye bone. Motioning is Nelson. Fake to be enemy. Anese, right side, and it's drilled by one receiver and too short for the other. Collins and Nelson both out there, and the ball was sort of placed on a low line drive right between them. And Oklahoma holds. Colorado will have to kick. All right, this play, uh, this was intercepted late in the first half. This play really has not worked for them. But again, they're going into the wind, a stiff wind, and they will turn around here in about a minute 20. Lynn Milburn is the deep man to receive the kick of Keith English, 85. Ken McMitchell is the short man, about 15 yards in front of the guy you're looking at. Three kicks, 49-yard average for the senior, Keith English. This is a wobbly kick at the 16. Milburn gets it up for about seven yards to the 23, so a short kick of 36 and the seven-yard return. Be sure and join us next Saturday for another CFA doubleheader, 10th-ranked Auburn against Florida. That's at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. And then at 8 o'clock, South Carolina ranked number 18 will take on the Wolfpack of NC State. They upset Clemson today. Some interesting results in that ACC. That makes that a very big game for NC State in terms of the national picture because obviously South Carolina nationally ranked. Great victory for, uh, for North Carolina State. Tie game, minute 15, third quarter. Sooners at their 23. Thompson to Stell, who may have struggled his way back to the line of scrimmage. Oakland Salavea, a Samoan out of Oceanside, California, number 99, who spells Cole Hayes at right tackle. In on the stop at 6'4", 245. He looks like he plays a little bigger than that. And very mobile and very quick. 99, slipping the block, getting inside, penetration again. Death to the option game, and you can see why. Rod Fisher back in for Oklahoma as Damon Stell 
continues the shuttle system with number seven. They actually lost a yard on the play. A fake to the belly of the fullback. Thompson cuts it up over the 25. Hit hard there by the emotional free safety, Bruce Young. He's been in on some big plays for the Buffs tonight. You're right. I was just going to say the same thing, Bob. The guys played a great game. Their safety. USC gave them problems at the safety position. They were very quick coming up. Because Oklahoma does not pass the ball all that well, you can release those safeties early, and Colorado's doing a good job of it tonight. Another long-yarded situation. Sinners will face a third and six. Sophomore quarterback Charles Thompson. The third quarter has come to a close, and that third and six will take place as they change ends. 15 minutes remaining in loud Folsom Field. It's all tied up. We get underway in the final quarter of play. Oklahoma faces a third and six at its own 27-yard line. They'll go with two backs in the eye. Damon still out to the left. With the tight end, and the give is to the deep man, Eric Mitchell. First down, over the 40, to the 45, and now the 47-yard line. Alfred Williams finally with the stop. But we talked earlier about the explosiveness of Eric Mitchell, who averaged 14 yards a touch on the football, and he got more than that that time. That's a great call by the Oklahoma people. What they did was they spread the defense way out. They had three defensive backs right here, another defensive back over there. They ran a draw play. There was nobody up the middle to support this thing. Watch Eric Mitchell. There's no defensive backs. to the 47-yard line. Exploding his way through is Rodney Anderson, the fullback. Here's an example of how good Oklahoma is in the depth department, Kevin. On a third and six in the fourth quarter of a critical conference game, they have Damon Stell, Rodney Anderson, and Eric Mitchell, none of them starters in the backfield. On any other team, they would be starters. You're right, Bobby. And Barry Switzer never made any secret about it. He said, I've got the players, and I've got the coaches. And maybe a little unjust that they don't get the credit they deserve at Oklahoma for doing a great job preparing this team every single week. We should footnote that Stell had to be in there because of the injury to Gattis, but the other two backup people. Here's Mitchell trying to get down to the 40-yard line, and Canavis McGee, one of those great sophomore bookends out of Houston. Alfred Williams is the other. In on the stop. What must he be thinking after seven years? Bill McCartney is on the verge, tied in the fourth quarter. He has not scored on his team in three years. For 12 quarters coming in here, what could be going through his mind? This game is in the balance with 13.40 to go. Second down and nine. Anderson, the fullback, just for a couple. They'll stop his forward progress just inside the 39. Nose guard Tom Reinhardt at 6'3", 255. In on the stop, Oklahoma will face third and long again. Number 97, what a history he has in this program. His whole family slips the block by Wise, is able to come back on the backside. You know what's missing from this game? Big plays by Oklahoma. This is a big play offense, and there have not been any big plays. You can get attribute that to the defense of Colorado and their preparation. They've kept the thing down. They've got to march all the way. They have to get just to the nose of the 31-yard line. David Stell slots out to the right. Colorado coming quickly and maybe too quickly. Were they drawn off sides? Coming hard and fast was Canavis McGee, number 96. Buffs maybe a little too eager on third and eight. We'll see. Was there movement on the right side of the Oklahoma line? Sooners reacting I, as if I the think, penalty will go in their favor. Well, I think it's Oklahoma. I think it's Anthony Phillips, 68. I think it's motion, and it was Arthur Walker that blew in there. And the question is, what did the officials see? It certainly looked like he was drawn off. He never hesitated, speaking of Walker, and made contact. Now the Sooners reacting in a negative way. We have offsetting penalties. We have offside. 
on the defense. We have a pickup on the offense, so we'll offset it. Okay, what they're calling right guard, which I, the right guard, all right, the right guard, just to the right of number six. Now he's going to move, or Walker's going to charge him, force him to move. Now I guess they're calling encroachment. I guess the ball was snapped simultaneously there. That's a very confusing call. It should be one or the other. It's third and eight again. Colorado shifting all over the place on defense. Thompson up the middle, cuts outside, has the first down inside the 25. They'll be bounced out of bounds at the 22, maybe the 23. Dion figures, and there you see the blinding 4-3-5 in the 40 speed of Charles Thompson. The young sophomore, but remember, he has played against Nebraska. He's played against Miami. This guy has played, and he knows what to do in big games. And the Lord gave him a gift to run, and he can run at the right time. And that was almost a big play. Almost a score. Yes, you're right. A big play. He got the first down, but almost a touchdown. You're right. First and 10 at the 23. Oklahoma trying to retake the lead. It's been a while since the Sooners have been on top. Give us to the first man through the fullback, Rodney Anderson, and Oakland Salavea, the 6'5 junior, met him head on. Sooners get the football down to the 21. It'll be second and eight. Clock runs as we approach 12 minutes remaining. Here's, here's an area where Oklahoma is not at a disadvantage. They don't have a goal line offense. Their offense is good for 100 yards, and they become very effective as they get down inside the 20. Passing teams, multiple offense teams sometimes have a problem, but not Oklahoma. They'll pound it right at you. Steps up through, and he is met head on. Michael Jones, 59, the right inside linebacker, really wrecked him up as the ball got inside the 20 near the 18. Again, unbalanced to this side, to the left side, and here's your guy again. Watch him come left and cut up right in there when it becomes open. Now, this thing has got to be a good key for Colorado because they've done it every time. Thompson does a nice job cutting it up inside when they overplay it. Third down again. This time it'll be, you could consider it third and long. The officials will stop the clock, and Oklahoma will call a timeout. Zai. Maybe got poked in the eye on that hard hit. 11 minutes left. Sooners on the verge of breaking the tie. A Jeep, there's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by USF&G, all across this country, USF&G protects your business, home, auto, and life. USF&G covers the USA. Folsom Field, Boulder, Colorado. And an injury taking place on Charles Thompson, who came off holding his left hand. And he got it caught inside. Watch Mike Jones, 59, make the hit. And this is a hit. Underneath the helmet, got that hand pinned in there. Back live, it's third and five. Thompson fakes and then gives to the fullback. And down near or beyond first yard, first down territory, Rodney Anderson. That was an interesting play. It looked like Thompson was going to get fake to him, and then he just shoved it out there, and Anderson grabbed it and went right through the middle. That's a true option, Bob. It's when they ride the fullback and they're reading the thing to see which way the tackle goes, what the, what the defense is doing. It worked very well, and you've got to give credit to Phillips and Wise. What a job they've done tonight. Rodney Anderson, nine runs, 64 yards, proving once again he's a big game player. Sooners have been perfect inside the Colorado 20. There it is, Anderson inside the five. As Bruce Young, the free safety, met him, the Sooners can get a first down without scoring, but they have to get to about the two-foot line, and now they'll have a second down at the three. Is wise again on Reinhardt, gets him turned. Great job by Phillips at the top of your screen. And off they go with the fullback. They've not been able to stop the fullback position tonight since late in the first half, and it's killing them, killing Colorado. Second down and one at the three-yard line. Anderson lowers his way off the right side. Down near first down territory. Left tackle Arthur Walker, 83, with a host of others in on the stop. The spot will become important here. Will it be a third down play for Oklahoma? 
clock running with 9.50 remaining. It's 14 all. It was that way at halftime. It's been a tough, emotional, bruising second half of play here in Boulder. It'll be third and one with the ball at the two. Rod Fisher in. Damon still out for Oklahoma. They'll play it in tight. some movement in there it'll it'll be Colorado look like the left side of the line defensively dead ball pick up for the offense oh, oh. okay this is a tough one number 64 right there pick up and here comes the defense Was Baron Manning and Barry's got to be upset with that. Teron, excuse me, Teron. <laughs> Baron was his great uncle. <laughs> and Barry was pretty hot. Now it'll be third and six at the seven. Uh, they could do just about anything. and the field goal unit is on. Cole Hayes, right tackle. Bill McCartney's team has kept Oklahoma out of the end zone. Now the Sooners will evidently go for three. As R.D. Lasher is on, he's 0 for 1 in field goals on the year. He missed from 66. This one a little bit closer. This will be about a 22-yard attempt. It's about a yard or two inside the right hash mark, so he does have an angle to deal with. This is his first legitimate attempt this year in game seven. The snap and the hold look good. The kick is right through, and the Sooners have a 17-14 lead with 8.15 remaining in the game. So last year, the sophomore, who was 10 for 15 in field goals as a freshman, finally gets his first of the year. Just hasn't had that many opportunities. Barry Switzer gets three, but he won it seven. His team leads by three. We're in the final 8-15 of this great football game in Colorado. Kickoff, Oklahoma working against the wind, we thought, in the fourth quarter. But as sooner luck would have it, we look around the rim of the stadium, the flags are hanging limp. The breeze has finally stopped as Todd Thompson kicks it high, and it's down to the three-yard line. Right there is M.J. Nelson. He's got a bit of a crease to the outside and pops his way to the 31-yard line. Scott Garl, the defensive back of the Sooners, in on the special teams play. What an epic scoring drive it was. Eight minutes, 70 yards, 14 plays. It actually spanned two quarters of the football game from the third to the fourth. And that's the kind of drive you like to see for seven points. And boy, does that put pressure on the Colorado offense, knowing that Oklahoma held the ball for eight minutes just before this drive. There's only 8.08 to go. Kicker's tee was left on the field. Todd Thompson was into making the tackle on the return. He was not worrying about the team. So now it'll be Colorado almost at the 31. A change in the backfield for the Buffs. They've checked in number 22, George Hemingway at fullback in place of Eric Kissin. He's with Pritchard and Bienemy. Pritchard in motion in the backfield. They fake to the fullback and locked it up the middle. And it's behind the receiver and the defensive back. Jeff Campbell, the intended receiver, Kevin Thompson running hard toward the point of impact. And the Colorado fans a bit upset because it appeared Thompson either did not ever look at the ball or at least found it very late. Campbell says it has to be pass interference. I, I think this is just great position. On second thought, the super slow-mo might reveal on otherwise. On second thought, maybe I don't think so. Look at Pritchard running down the sideline. Number nine, he's gone. Anessi never saw him. Anessi, five for eight in the first quarter for 134 yards. Since then, two for seven for 40 yards. And the Buffs get the ball out near the 35-yard line. George Hemingway on the carry. 
I think what happened on that last drive, Barry Switzer chose on third down with six yards to go to go with the fullback, and what he really did was go for the field goal on third down by setting it up for last year, and I think what he's saying is, I believe my defense can hold him, and that he's on the road and he needs a lead, and I think that's the type of thing a championship coach and a championship team does. This team believes in itself, meaning Oklahoma, and they feel three points will be enough. Third and seven would be long yardage, and the Buffs have done nothing in that situation tonight. Pressuring in the backfield, and it's tipped. 85 on the tip, Tom Backus. Great pressure in the backfield by Wayne Dixon. The Sooners all over the Buffaloes in holding there in Oklahoma. With 7.21 left, we'll get the football back. Defense has been the strength all year for Oklahoma. Now, we haven't seen this all night, but Colorado now in a passing situation. And here they come. Dixon, good. And Backus with the deflection. That's team defense. Keith English has punted four times for 45 and a half yards as his average. Oklahoma has Glenn Milburn back deep. A high spiral that rides its way to the 15, and Milburn has to make a pretty good grab as the ball seemed to seemingly came straight down an elevator shaft in front of him. And he had to dive forward to make the catch and hold on. So the Sooners will start rather deep in their own territory, just outside the 15. If they mount another drive like they did last time, it'll be lights out in Boulder for the home team. Well, in the huddle now, if you're playing defense for Colorado at home in the history of this series, I think you just have to look into the eyes of the guys around you, and, and everybody knows what they have to do. Defensively, Colorado's got to suck it up and come hard. This is an option team. They've got to try to get to those mesh points and pop the ball loose and stop that fullback because he's been killing them. It was a fourth quarter drive engineered by Thompson that helped the Sooners win down in Dallas against Texas. And now he's trying to solidify their position in this game with a similar effort. They give it to the deep man, and that is Damon Stell, the six-foot senior out of Oklahoma City, number 27. Michael Jones in on the stop. And again, we'll break down the wishbone for you and tell you how the Sooners are distributing the football. Fullback, 109 yards, big yards, a little bit at a time. 69 yards for the quarterback, very unusual. Colorado, and again, 134, but remember, Gattis, Gattis got about half of that early in the game. Fullback will take you to the ball at this point in the game. Oklahoma got five yards on first down. Thompson to Eric Mitchell, who dives over one man, gets up near the 25. He had to go to nearly the 26 for the first down, so Oklahoma will face third and short as the time ticks away, 6.20 remaining. All right, what I'm trying to tell you about the fullback is he's been the key to the offense. Here's your fullback, here's a backer, here's a backer. Wherever that fullback goes, the ball's going to follow. He's their meat and potatoes at this point in the game. Now watch him. Here they go. It's power right behind Anthony Phillips. And you can expect that to happen. They're very, very unlikely to run any kind of reverses or counters here. They'll stick with what got them here. It's third and one. Mitchell diving. Met head on midair, but has the first down. He went airborne and was met by Canavis McGee. So Oklahoma, a big first down. Time will start becoming a factor now that the Sooners have moved the chains. Down on the play, and Oklahoma cannot afford this. Is Anthony Phillips the right guard? To the sidelines we go. Here's Chris Fowler. Okay, Bob, if you saw our college game day show this morning, you saw our story on Diana Anglin, Oklahoma's head cheerleader, who has been without the use of her right hand since birth, but that hasn't stopped her from cheerleading or a career in gymnastics. How have you done it? Well, I've always just been really positive, and my parents have been behind me, and all my coaches, and all my friends and everything, and I've just tried to stay real positive and try everything. Great. Do we worry tonight earlier? The Sooners behind. No, we're going to win it. We're going to pull it out. All right, Sooners! <laughs> Thanks, Diana. Bob? Well, gymnastics has been a pretty good tradition lately at Oklahoma. <laughs> Kelly Garrison-Steves of our Olympic team announced her retirement a couple of days ago. It'll be a while before they get this guy out of there, though. Barry Switzer in his 16th year with the Sooners came on the scene in 73 and unless they turn the football over here or get hit with some penalties they are about to take control of the football game. 549 left Oklahoma with the ball and a three point lead. Uh, Colorado 549 remaining 
Anthony Phillips took a knee to the helmet on that last play. He is now off the field, and we're ready to roll with Oklahoma facing a first down and 10 at their own 27-yard line. 5.45 now as the officials start the clock, and here come the Sooners. Colorado needs a big play sometime soon. Thompson pitches outside, and it's Rod Fisher, a freshman halfback out of Lawton, Oklahoma. At MacArthur High School there, he surpassed 2,200 yards, number one in the state of Oklahoma. There is a flag on the play. Crowd reaction and the official signal tells us it's against the visitors. What happened to Anthony Phillips? All right, Anthony Phillips, top right of your screen. He's the guard, just to the right of the center, number 68. Watch him get kneed right in the head by Deluzio. See with the blue right there, on, right on his knee. Let's go down to Chris Fowler for an update on Phillips' condition. Okay, I'm standing right behind Anthony Phillips. There are five, count them, Oklahoma trainers and doctors talking to him. He's shaking his head, yeah, that he's okay, but they are not so sure about setting him back in the game. Now I think he's convinced them. He looks to be coming back in, guys. Well, Anthony Phillips is the emotional leader of this front line. With all the injuries they've had to people like center Bob Latham, offensive guard Larry Medice, tackle Gary Bennett, and tight end Duncan Parham, Herb Johnson, the Oklahoma assistant head coach and offensive line coach, told me today, emotionally, Anthony's the one that's really kept them together. And physically, Bob, he's a great player. First and 17 at the 21. The give is to Leon Perry, the fullback, and we might have had a face mask as flags fly. He had people grabbing at him all over the place as Perry, back in the game, took one right in the helmet with someone's hand, and that will pay off big time for the Sooners. Clock stopped for the moment at 5.26 remaining. Number 82, Cole Hayes, inadvertently, he's got his hand right on the mask. You know what to do? Look at the strength of Perry. He's been doing that all night, carrying people like that. So Oklahoma gets the yardage back. Ball is out over the 30. They'll spot it at the 31 and a half. They have to get to just past the 37 for a first down. And when you start subtracting time remaining here, Kevin, it'll only take a couple of more first downs for Oklahoma to really have control here as they try to shut it down. Bobby, they've got to stop the fullback. Bobby. They've got to come hard right up the middle. It'll be first and six at the 31. There's the fullback. Leon Perry hit early by Canavis McGee, but holding on out near the 35. It'll be second and about three or four yards for the Sooners. Against an option team, when they're trying to kill the clock, the safest play is the fullback. What you want them to do, you want to stop the fullback, and since they don't pass, the most dangerous thing you can force them to do is pitch the ball when they're not ready. You've got to close on that quarterback and have him make a bad decision. And uh, Oklahoma, of course, has been trained not to do any of that. Second down and three. The crowd thinks it's third and three because of the scoreboard. It makes no difference as Eric Mitchell angles his way with speed and jumping ability to a first down out the right side to the 39-yard line. And Boy, guess, Eric Mitchell, an exciting performer. Guess who they go over is Phillips, who was back in the back in the game. And another Sooner is down on the play. This time it's 76, the right tackle, Mark Van Kiersbilk. There's another guy that's valuable. He's played every position on the offensive line. He began the year at tight end when they needed help at tight end. Tremendous athlete, good offensive tackle. Another guy they really can't afford to lose. We're running out of offensive linemen. Coming up after we wrap up our action here in Boulder tonight, Sports Center will be anchored by John Saunders. And then a little bit later on tonight on ESPN, we'll send you way out west. After John updates you on the day in sports, they'll go out to the islands where the rainbows await the Cougars. BYU at Hawaii at 11.30 p.m. Eastern time. Tonight as ESPN continues its CFA football coverage. With Kevin Kiley and Chris Fowler, this is Bob Carpenter at Folsom Field in Boulder, Colorado. We've got 4.20 remaining. As they continue to look at Mark Van Kier's built the 6'2 junior right tackle. There's Eric Mitchell, number one. Coming out of Pine Bluff, Arkansas, as a high school All-American quarterback. 
Eric uh, told me a couple of months ago that he received a lot of hate mail from Razorback fans. Leaving Arkansas to play at Oklahoma is a lot like leaving Oklahoma to play in Texas. Of course, the Sooners recruit Texas quite effectively, but this time they got a blue chipper out of the land of opportunity. I'll tell you about Eric Mitchell. I, I did the Big 8, as you see Van Kiersville coming off the field. I did the Big 8 a few years ago. I believed, as freshman, Eric Mitchell was every bit as good as Jamel Holloway. Jamel took control of that position, never gave it up. But here's a guy who spent all these years at Oklahoma doing what has been asked of him, and he is a great athlete. He'd have started anywhere else if he had played at any other university. A tremendous athlete, and showing it tonight. Also a budding TV personality in Oklahoma City. Single back. It's the fullback. Leon Perry straight ahead, chewing up yards, chewing up time. The clock is under four minutes now as the Sooners move it out to the 44-and-a-half-yard line. Bill McCartney is finding out tonight how good you have to be to rise to the top of the Big 8. Well, you may remember, uh, you may wonder as I sit up here and say fullback, and then they run the fullback, why you can't stop this fullback. That's what Oklahoma does, folks. They have a tremendously strong offensive line and great personnel, and they're just doing it physically. Second and five again. It's Perry, the only man behind the quarterback. He's got it again. An initial grab made by the nose guard, Tom Reinhardt, as the ball has moved out very close to first down yardage. They will spot it right at the nose of the 49-yard line. It looks like they're a foot short or so. Timeout situation with just over three minutes remaining. Nebraska won its game big today, beating K-State 48 to three. Oklahoma trying to keep pace. They bring in two tight ends. The Sooners came in 2-0 in the Big Eight. Kansas next week, then at Oklahoma State, at Missouri, and then the big one the 19th of November against Nebraska. Third and one. Pretty good defensive stick, but Oklahoma has the first down. Leon Perry, Canavis McGee angling in from outside linebacker. And that'll put the ball about a foot or two past the marker. They'll move the chains again. There was the play. He, he sold out, came down. Canavis did. Needed to do that on first down. They need to take a chance. Uh, Oklahoma is just total control. Eight-minute drive prior to this, and now they're just eating up the clock. the way back at their own 16. Anthony Phillips is back in. That's not good news. Fumble! Fumble! And Colorado has the football! Looks like Bruce Young, the free safety at the 47 of the Buffs. The turnover they've been waiting for. Michael Jones with a big hit on the fullback may have forced the miscue. We'll see if Switzer can rely on his defense with 2.17 left. Tom Reinhardt, number 97, gets his hand on the ball. He'll pull it loose. Jones makes the hit. And Young, all three of these guys have played a gutsy game, and then Young will come up with the ball on the 46. A fake to the fullback. On SA right side, the enemy has room on the outside. He's inside the 40, out of bounds at the 35-yard line, but a flag lays at the line of scrimmage. Right in the middle of your screen, we'll see it in a moment as they're going to evidently call this one back. Oh, my, if you're on offense and you're the head coach. Well, that is the first holding call in this game. What a time for it. Inside the 40 at the 37 is where they'll spot it. Time left. Oklahoma with a field goal for a lead. Anese swings it to the tight end. John Perrick. 
out over the 45 to the 47. He has his first two collegiate catches tonight, plus a two-point conversion catch to go with it. So the Buffs got a good part of the 20 yards back they needed. They'll be faced with a second and nine after that first and 20 for 11 yards. Lining up quickly with a minute 40 remaining. Pitch to B. Enemy. Midfield. Still on his feet. Inside the 50. Down to the 46 of Oklahoma. Tom Back has finally got him down. It appeared he would be stopped at midfield, which would have left them with third and six. But not now. 18 for 109. Give me Eric B. Enemy anytime. What a great player. Good tough run and this is four down territory you don't have to worry about third down this is four down territory third and two to go a minute 23 left Oklahoma by three Colorado desperately trying to come back again 123 left Bill McCartney's team driving they need a first down Barry Switzer's defense trying to hold on to a three-point lead 17 14 it's third and two at the Oklahoma 46 yard line it's actually a long two because they have to get about a foot beyond the Oklahoma 44 to move the chains. Basic difference in these two teams. Colorado does not have a power fullback. Kissick is a little bit undersized. Bucks now with one timeout remaining. Fake to the fullback. End around. Campbell. First down. At the Oklahoma 39. Casper and Good finishing off the play defensively, but Jeff Campbell, who's caught the ball well tonight, now running it as well, and he wants the crowd to get into it. I don't think he'll have a problem. Well, I'll never criticize Colorado for being conservative again on third and two. Remember I told you they don't have a fullback. They go to the reverse, and Campbell makes the play for the first down. A minute 16 remaining. They pitch it out to the enemy. Good defense there by Ken McMitchell, fighting off blockers, spreading the play out, sideline to sideline. And Bobby Proctor with a little slap on the helmet for Bienemy there as well. Will Ken Culbertson, the place kicker, get a chance to tie this game for Colorado if they can't put it in the end zone? Uh, he's almost there. Now, that kid's 6'5", 175 pounds. I have to tell you what we heard this week. Uh, Bill McCartney told us, this is playing against the Oklahoma defense. We can't score. Their offense can't score on their defense. That's how tough they are. To get outside or get up the middle on this team is very difficult. A gain of three. It's second and seven. Manesse sacked back outside is Oklahoma 45-yard line. Curtis Williams with his second sack of the year. And the team sack leader, Scott Evans, also went on it. I guess they'll credit both of them with a half of a sack, and it's the biggest of the game for either team. 50 seconds left as the clock runs and the Buffs scramble back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 15. <laughs> to the sideline, incomplete. Jeff Campbell, the intended receiver, good coverage by the left corner, Jerry Parks, and it comes down to this. Fourth and 15 at the 45. That we is. see tight end John Perrick coming in. The place kicker, Ken Culbertson, is in for what will be a mammoth 62-yard attempt from the right hash mark to tie the game. 35 seconds remaining. He's been wide right this year from 59. His longest is from 48. It's long enough. But wide right as it dropped beyond the end line. And Oklahoma holds with 29 seconds remaining. What a terrific night for Colorado. But evidently, not quite enough. Well, Colorado in a difficult position here. Not a passing hurry-up team. They have to go for a field goal. It is certainly if not out of Culberson's range, good hold, very close to it. A desperate attempt, and I'll tell you, great effort by Oklahoma here. Oklahoma got pounded the whole night. And you think they don't want to win? You think they weren't worried? There's some emotion from Oklahoma. What a great job their defense has done here, in the, and their offense in the last quarter. 
Thompson will down it. Colorado has one timeout left. But does it matter? I don't think anybody realizes how much that man wanted to win this game. Kevin, earlier tonight you said Eric Bieniemy would have to rush it 20 times for 100 yards. He bettered that by 13 yards on 20 carries tonight. But the Sooners were just a little bit too much for the Buffaloes tonight as they win it 17-14. Oklahoma 6-1, 3-0 in the Big 8. Colorado will go to 5-2, and 1-2. And, and again, Bill McCartney finds out how tough it is to get to the top of this league. Well, I think if you're looking for parity in the Big 8, if you're wondering if teams are gaining on Oklahoma and Nebraska, I think the answer is tonight. Great effort by both clubs. All right, Oklahoma wins at 17-14. Here's Chris Fowler with Barry Switzer. Coach, you escaped barely. Oh, that's right. But I'm glad to get out of here with a win. You know, the only chance they got to win the ball games when we fumble the ball with 217 when we make the first down. You know, but we held on. Great sack for Curtis Williams. Pushed him really too far. Surprised they would try that far. Of course, the win here and the light ball. But uh, we had a lot of calls go against us. I'm going to grade this film, look at it really hard. You had backup halfbacks, really, for the last winning field goal drive. They were lost able to put it together. Starters, lost uh, three or four, lost a couple offensive linemen. Uh, but uh, guys did a great job. Charles Thompson did a great job. And, and, and Bill McCartney's group here did a great job. They fought. They were well prepared. Uh, the crowd was ready. I don't like playing here. We're going to Norman next year. OK, thanks very much, Coach. Back upstairs. Barry Switzer. And now the Sooners have won 28 consecutive Big 8 contests. The Oklahoma defensive line, offensive line, excuse me, gets our Casio players of the game. There's the anchor, the right guard, the 6'3 senior, a three-time All-Big 8 performer, Anthony Phillips. And meanwhile, it's still a bitter one to swallow for Arthur Walker and the rest of the Colorado Buffaloes. For Chris Fowler and Kevin Colley, Bob Carpenter, so long as the Sooners win it in Colorado, here's John Saunders.